2,000 Marines and sailors are being deployed to Israeli waters, and they're being prepared for a potential deployment into the country. At the same time, Janet Yellen reassures all of us, yes, the United States can afford two wars. And don't worry, when Joe Biden was asked on 60 Minutes, he also confirmed, come on, we're the most powerful nation in the history, not, not just the world, the history of the world. We can handle it. They're gearing up for for a major escalation of war. And the argument is that by sending the troops in, it will prevent war. But uh, let's let's be real. If the U.S. actually deploys ground forces into Israel. Wow. Talk about a dramatic escalation at a time. We've already been seeing attacks from Syria and Israel, Lebanon and Israel back and forth. There's now threats from Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham says that we should bomb Iran with or without evidence. I hope you guys are ready for the war that they're about to start. Pains me to say. We'll talk about that, plus a whole bunch of other, uh, uh, man, it's just, it's, it's, it's wild. It's wild. Today's a crazy day. We had this horrible incident, and in, I think it was Brussels, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Where uh, a man attacked, uh, I just, well, it's a tragedy. He killed people. I believe they died, right? just want to make sure yeah. I'm really, cl mm -hmm. really clear on this one. Two and then three. Yeah, and it was revenge over another kid who was Muslim who was attacked, and, and, and it's just getting crazy out there. So we'll, we're going to talk about all that. But before we do, there's one brand that doesn't mind sponsoring content that is uh, war related, and that's us, Cast Brew Coffee. <laughs> we sponsor ourselves for this reason. Look, I get it, man. If you're selling toothpaste, do you really want your toothpaste commercial to be right next to someone being like, several people died in war today? Eh, probably not, but we sponsor ourselves. That means if you like the work that we do, if you think this coverage is important, you go to castbrew.com and you buy a bag of Casper coffee. We've got pumpkin spice, Mr. Bocas pumpkin spice experience right now because it is pumpkin spice season. But of course, we've got a whole bunch of other blends. Appalachian Nights is my favorite. Rise with the Bur Roberto Jr. Close second. Buy our coffee, support the work we do, and it's uh, it's pretty good. But also, more importantly, support our work directly by going to TimCast.com and clicking join us. Become a member. And not only are you supporting the work we do here at TimCast, supporting this show, it is the primary way we fund this operation. But you'll also get access to our Discord server to hang out with like-minded individuals and probably not so like-minded individuals and have some good arguments. You get access to the shows that they've all been producing. They got pre-shows, they got after shows. And as a member, you can submit questions and call into our members-only uncensored show Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. and actually talk to us and our guests. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and a whole lot more, we got Josie, the redheaded libertarian. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, who are you? What do you do? I am Josie. I'm the redheaded libertarian. I do outside media work for uh, TimCast.com, and I also host a Spaces show on X.com called Spaces with Josie. Tomorrow night, I'll be having on Vivek Ramaswamy. So you can go to my page, TRHL Official, and uh, find my link there and uh, watch the show. Cool. Thanks. We got Hannah Claire Brimlow hanging out. Hey, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlow. I'm a writer for TimCast.com. You can follow at TimCast News on X and Instagram. And I just think that Jan <clears throat> Janet Yellen is pulling a girl math moment when she says we can afford two wars. I think that's girl so Girl math? This is this thing this where like, like women AOC. justify yeah. spending money in a way that doesn't actually make sense. And this is what <laughs> yes. Janet Yellen is doing. She's giving this very female episode of TimCast a, a horrible way to start. Anyways, <laughs> Libby's here, of course. Hey, Hannah Claire. Hey, hey Josie. Hey, Tim. Glad Hi. to be here. I'm Libby Emmons. I am the editor in chief at the post millennial and human events ian uh, ascended can't do anything about it. he's just gone <laughs> gotta go just, think about the 51st yeah, state <laughs> I, well, he, he, was, he was meditating and then i just saw him lift up into the sky and then i was like well i'll call libby and see if she's around yeah this check here i am he's yeah. just gone welcome yeah. libby thanks no he'll be back next week he's uh, uh doing a bunch of shows and stuff down in miami so that's right thanks for hanging out libby sure we got Serge pressing the buttons yeah i'm here uh boca boca let's uh win in the semis guys anyways let's start the show here's a story from cnn U.S. Marine Rapid Response Force moving toward Israel as Pentagon strengthens military posture in region. I love how they're very careful with their headline. Let's be real. This is a deployment. But here's how they phrase it. As, as after you read the headline, moving towards, what does that mean? A U.S. Marine Rapid Response Force is headed to the waters off the coast of Israel. And the Pentagon is preparing American troops for a potential deployment to the country, escalating the U.S.'s show of force in the region as it works to prevent the conflict between Israel and Hamas from widening any further. A defense official familiar with the planning said the rapid response force consisting of 2,000 Marines and sailors is being sent. It will join a growing number of U.S. warships and forces converging on Israel as the U.S. seeks to send a message of deterrence to Iran and the Lebanese militant group Hezbollah. 
On Sunday evening, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin ordered that roughly 2,000 troops prepare for a potential deployment to Israel to help with the tasks like medical and log logistical support, multiple defense officials says. Uh, in other words, the U.S. is entering the war. Yes. No, we're just entering near the war. war. We're just moving towards the war. I hate that phrasing. I think that's so lame. But we did that in Kiev, too, because we have special forces in Kiev mm -hmm. hanging out. And we haven't declared a war since World War II, so this is just more run-of-the-mill. Well, we don't have a House Speaker, so we can't really declare much of anything at oh, all. Oh, golly. What <laughs> Maybe timing. that's good then, though. Maybe that's, that's good. That's the silver lining to that situation. Well, the only issue, though, is that, of course, Biden can do pretty much whatever he wants, which is what we're seeing play out right now. Kind of makes but it's wonder. not really Biden. I mean, mm -hmm. Biden's staffers can do whatever they want. It kind of makes you wonder about the timing because they kept not working on Sunday or not working Saturday, not working Sunday, not working Monday. And it's like they were putting off this vote. And now all of a sudden there are Marines headed to Israel without without Congress even in session. Like, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, that is the pretty president, upsetting. Actually. So so here's what happens. I'm not saying this is definitive, absolute, absolutely going to happen. But how do you as the president get the U.S. into a war without a declaration from Congress? Well, for the most part, they've just done it. They mm -hmm. just send the troops. They send U.S. Marines and warships into the Mediterranean. They send it into Israeli waters. And then what happens when Hezbollah attacks? Now you don't need a declaration. Now it's, oh, we're, we're being fired upon. We have mm -hmm. to react. Our ships that we put there strategically are now under attack. That's right. <laughs> it's crazy how that happens. What's wild is remember when they said Trump was going to start World War Three, <laughs> and how Biden came in and said, now the adults are in charge. Oh. And then he proceeded to destroy everything. But like, piece how long until they're like, well, actually, this is all Trump's fault in the first place anyways. If Trump had never Didn't been president. I, I feel like they'll always say it, but there'll be some specific st statement from Biden that's like, ultimately, this is all Trump's fault, even though I have been in office yep. for basically Hummus the last Hummus would not day. have escalated if not for yeah. Donald Trump doing nothing. I don't know. He'll come up with Well, that. Hamas has been planning this attack for two, two years, years, which is basically when Biden took office. Yes. They started planning this attack. Exactly. Because when Trump was in office, he was strong enough. He had an interesting quote today. He was speaking in Iowa and he said, he said that his personality had kept us out of war. That's not wrong. It's though. entirely right. I mean, as I've said about Trump in the past, like the thing about Trump is he appears to be an absolute crazy man. Mm -hmm. And you stay away from a crazy man. A mm -hmm. crazy man will do crazy things. So you kind of back off. You let him do his whole crazy thing. And that's a big part of what made him so effective is that he was unpredictable. You never quite knew what kind of thing he was going to do right down to the Abraham Accords, which were actually pretty genius because well, they were these bilateral agreements. Well, that's kind of the opposite. I mean, it's not just that Trump threatened to nuke Moscow and uh, uh, and what, what else? What, who else did he threaten to uh, Moscow? Was and that Iran? China it a was little Iran bit as well. That... China. Well, which which city was it? He said he was going to there was two cities. Nuke the shit out of one, right? He Can said, no, 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 he, he has that famous quote where he said he would nuke Moscow and then Be and Beijing. Yes. Yeah, I'm like, it's, it wasn't Xinjiang. I mean, that's not what it was. Beijing, right, of course. He duh. also had that threat that he did on Twitter at the time about like, do not come at me, Iran or something like you right. will, you will experience like a hell you've never seen before. But yeah. I think, I think for Russia, for instance, they have no reason to invade Ukraine when Donald Trump is saying, we're getting our troops out of the Middle East. This is ridiculous. You know, what are we here for? Oil. And so that was a big part of the conflict is the U.S. basically trying to force Russia's energy business into the gutter. Mm -hmm. And instead of competing on the open market, when Donald Trump starts saying, look, we're not going to go to war over this. We're going to do energy our way. We're going to start drilling for oil in the United States. We've got Alaska. We could do all these things. And he did. And gas prices go down. Now, gas prices went down dramatically. Every, people f failed to mention this because of COVID. Because demand was in the gutter and they had to give oil away. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. But it still was relatively cheap even before this. And so Russia's incentive for war is minimal. Then you get the Abraham Accords. Why? Because there's an economic incentive now from the West. I mean, this is brilliant stuff. But, but, also, if, but, yeah. but what happens then is the, the, uh, the left is arguing that this conflict between Hamas and Israel is Trump's fault because of the Abraham Accords. Because it marginalized and sidelined Hamas and their only reaction was going to maybe be military conflict. And I'll push back on that and say, if Donald Trump's policies were still in place, then the incentives of Saudi Arabia and Qatar and the Emirates, et cetera, would be to align with Israel because their deal is being jeopardized by the actions of Hamas. Instead, you get 
Joe Biden and his administration that doesn't care for these negotiations and wants war. Well, and that's exactly what happened, right? You have Saudi Arabia, which was doing negotiations with Israel. They were cooling some tensions. And now that has totally been scuttled as a result of the Hamas attack. Um, so I think that's been that's been pretty effective. And if if what the Biden administration wants is permanent war, which it does seem like that is what mm -hmm. they're interested in, um, then it would make sense that they would continue to help escalate the situation. I mean, it always uh, I, I can't help but think of months before Russia invaded Ukraine, there was that phone call between Putin and Biden where Putin mm -hmm. said, if you promise that they are not going to join NATO, we will not invade Ukraine. And I just can only imagine, you know, I don't know what Biden said in response other than, no, we're not going to do that. But I can only imagine these two personalities were not going to have a productive conversation. The relationship between the U.S. and Russia was the strongest, at least in most recent years, when Donald Trump was in office because Putin respects him more than he respects Biden. Yeah, you also had Kamala Harris coming out saying that Ukraine was going to join NATO at some point. You have all of these overtures from the EU to mm -hmm. bring Ukraine in. And Ukraine, doesn't Ukraine like mean borderlands, essentially? Yeah. So if you take Ukraine away, then suddenly Europe is and NATO and the EU are right on the doorstep of Russia. And that's a threat to them. Like there needs to be. Right. We act like they want this barrier. Right. We act like they're uh, concerned that the NATO border is being expanded directly next to them is is sort of absurd when it's right. not. I mean, you can disagree with all kinds of other things, but this idea that this was one of the contingencies for not invading and that Biden just said, no, I'm against this and whatever. You know, obviously we we're setting the, the Biden administration did not take steps that were necessary to de-escalate a situation. In fact, now that we see that apparently Yellen is like, yes, we can afford another war. Of course, they want another war because who among them makes money? Probably all of them. We also have this tweet from someone. I don't know who, but it's under the Biden Twitter account, X account. Saying an attack on one group of us is an attack on all of us. In America, hate will not prevail. Venom and violence against any one community cannot stand and will not be the story of our time. Who's even, who is he, who is Corinne Jean-Pierre even talking about yeah. there? Who is Corinne Jean-Pierre? <laughs> I think. <laughs> talking about and talking to. What I think it should be concern? illegal for uh, anyone but the president to post from the president's account. I, I completely agree. agree uh, but it should say like POTUS little staffers or something. No, right. it, that it should, should be illegal. Be account. It should no, be, that should this, be the account. It should, can't right, they tweet but from this like, account should only be the president due to the fact that it's public record as statements of the president. Right. I feel like this is a statement from the Biden administration writ large. It's not the Biden himself. But that's himself. true of the White House. I mean, the White House puts out statements all the time so that are attributed to the Biden, to Joe Biden, even though he is unlikely to have written them. Yeah. Yeah, in theory, point. he would have read them and signed off on them, though. Well, I mean, perhaps, don't think that's actually I mean, what right. think happens. That he does that to all the briefings. No, I don't even think this man then, reads any of the briefings, the but that's because I don't trust him. It should be a legal requirement that a president sign off on any statement attributed to the president for mm -hmm. the sake of public records. Yeah, he should sign off on it before he takes the documents and puts them in his garage. Yeah. That's yeah. That <laughs> means if they want to write Most something on behalf company, for Twitter, right? for X, then they have to get approval from him and he mm -hmm. has to sign it. He has to sign off on it. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. He has to have his own tweets to have a, I, I'm Joe Biden and I approve this message line. <laughs> right. But this is this is basically more war posturing, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. The attack on one group is an attack on all of us. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. And but they're going to say you're either with us or the terrorists, et cetera. Yeah. Textbook. Yeah. But I don't think that... Joe Biden is in a position to argue with his own staff, right? I don't think, I, I personally think Joe Biden would be happy to go to war, war, but on top of that, he's not checking his own Twitter. He's probably not reading the briefings. I mean, he is not in a position to challenge whichever staffer is saying, no, Mr. Prident, President, this is a good line. Um, I mean, even last week when, when we had him say, I never thought I'd, I'd be able to confirm. He had that weird statement about the, mm -hmm. the photos of the children. And then it was like, the White, the White House, House like, then fact checked him. This didn't happen. Which is not a great look. I mean, Biden wants to go to war. His administration, his staffers on ESAP have their own reasons for wanting to go to war. And either way, it's going to hurt the American people. Well, sure. That's what war does. I mean, unless we like uh, ramp up our munitions and actually start spending a lot of money and <laughs> creating a better war machine and then getting rich off that like we've done countless times before. Mm -hmm. That's also effective. I'm kind of noticing you know? a pattern with how uh, the way we withdrew from Afghanistan and then went to Ukraine, kind of noticing like they're kind of losing steam with the Ukraine thing. But now <laughs> Israel's like the next big thing. So they're like, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of going to take a back, a back, uh, a back seat to it's like the to eye Israel. of Sauron. You yeah. Know? Take a look at this. Uh, exactly. He must be so mad right this now. This just popped up right now on the website for the article we had. 
U.S. Secretary of State Blinken speaks after meeting with Israeli war cabinet for more than seven hours. Watch on CNN. Well, we're not watching CNN, mm-hmm. but that's the breaking news right now. He's speaking. We'll, I wonder what he'll be saying. We'll pick up those updates uh, in a minute after they come out, you know, outside of the video. But uh, I think we're dangerously close to World War Three. And I think it's a, a I mean, World War Three, what does it even mean? Uh, I think at some point within the next 12 months, there's going to be a dramatic and massive mobilization. I mean, and, and it's not even a bold prediction to say something like that. We're looking at 2000 Marines and sailors deploying to Israeli waters and there's already warships there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like if this escalates, wow, who could have seen that coming? Uh, Iran is to Russia as Israel is to the United States, in my opinion. Um, so I feel like if if like what Lindsey Graham really wants to do this, like he is just so ready. But if they if, if we do something to Iran, that's going to get Russia involved, it would be my fear. And that that would just be the escalation. And then if you have China and Taiwan happening kind of over there and a separate separate thing going on, like it's it, we're we're primed for escalations everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. I, I wonder about how this could play out. I mean, the U.S. is still the most powerful military force. I mean, how many aircraft carriers do we have? We've got, I think, 11 active strike groups and most other countries have one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're we're pretty dang powerful as a nation because it's probably more than just a nation considering. But. I wonder, I mean, does Russia and China enter this Middle Eastern conflict under the guise of the U.S. is going to cause nuclear war by, you know, and, and, and mass casualties and we have to intervene? What if what if Russia and China decide to prevent U.S. involvement in the conflict entirely? They deploy troops into Syria and and I don't know about Iran, but perhaps I don't know if that would be the most strategic location. Well, wasn't wasn't Israel taking shots at Syria today in Damascus? They were today shooting I mean, at the they, they, uh, it's Iran. Been a, it's been ongoing like nonstop. Iran. In Syria? In, the Israeli strikes on Syria have been happening for a decade. Well, sure. But I mean, just today. There was something specific you saw right. today. Yeah. But, and Lebanon is targeting civilian communities in Israel. I mean, this is... Israel evacuated some of the north. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, yeah. But Biden is going to visit Israel next week. Now, for all those who are sitting on at Wednesday, home being like, you know, I don't care about war. I don't know any about this stuff. I'm like, okay, well, you know, your gas prices are going to quadruple. Mm-hmm. You know, six, six seven dollar gas yeah, a lot of these people are too young to even remember after 9-11 what happened with the economy and what happened with the mm. gas prices and, you know, like. I don't remember that. Yeah. You don't? I wonder how, also young. how the U.S. is going to no, handle I'm, this. No, not because I'm young. I just, I just, <laughs> I didn't have a car. I, I only You weren't started, affected by these things. Yeah. Mm. I, I have questions about the. started buying gas three uh, years ago. <laughs> I have questions about the people who are currently serving as the Marines who will be deployed to this region. What are your questions? Well. You know, I have to imagine they're on the younger side, likely Gen Z. Mm-hmm. I doubt they're sending a bunch of 40 year olds, you know, so millennials m- like m- mid to late 30s now on average with some younger millennials down into like, the. I think what you could be late 20s and be millennial, right? Or yeah, no? You can. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's mostly going to be Gen Z. So who who's the kind of person who wants to enlist? right now someone who wants to do a lot of tiktok dances yeah and be filmed. You're big on drag queen i've heard this and, argument right now you know. well do you guys know that you can get cosmetic surgeries if you enlist that's so fun that's so cool yeah they'll they'll cut your dick off for you yeah, yeah. they'll do anything there's yeah. an argument someone was like saying if you uh tell the air force that you and your wife are in a dispute because she needs a boob job the air force will be like well to help your marriage this is cause cos- i don't know could if that's you imagine telling like roman soldiers that's join true. the army and we can cut your dick off it's for insane. you <laughs> i mean i think the the i remember this when i was you know graduating high school that uh student loan debt was so crazy that i knew a lot of people who were not interested in military service but said but if i if i enlist i could potentially get it paid for through the gi and i mm-hmm. need to go to college to be able to see it and we've seen that argument sort of collapse the last uh, last couple of years enrollments down we know enlistment in the military service is down so ultimately the the very few benefits um to to enlisting in in the army or in any sort of military branch are not as persuasive as they once were my question is um are they going to try and sell it as a rallying point? I mean, after 9-11, we did see a lot of an, an increase in military enlistment. People, people saw it as their national duty. And I don't think people feel that sort of patriotic pride right now, especially, you know, do you want to be enlisted under Biden? Probably Definitely not. Definitely not. They've demonized nationalism mm-hmm. completely. Like there's there's nobody. That's why they have a hiring crisis, because a lot of them would be like, I went to the service because my father served and my grandfather served. Well, well, fear not, everyone. Because CBS 8 has given us the fact check that amid the Israel-Hamas war and the deployment of 2,000 additional Marines and sailors into a region and warships, U.S. military draft not returning. 
amid Israel Hamas war? Oh, because oh. that's that's the question everyone had already asked. I love this pre bunk. This is what they call <laughs> the it. The pre bunk. They call it a pre bunk. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Where they put out a fact check before the story actually hits for this reason. Yeah. They're just wondering that if, in case you were wondering, I mean, it makes sense. That's that's the obvious first question. If if no one is enlisting in the military, partially because no one is qualified to enlist in the military, that's one of the biggest deterrents. There are people who would want to, and they just don't meet any of the fitness or mental health requirements. So on top of that, we don't have enough people, then yeah. the draft is the only way to get around those standards. Exactly. I, I had read a statistic, and I, I you can't quote me on it, but it was something like 70% of Gen Z like wouldn't qualify for the military because oh, it's, uh, everybody is sick and everybody is fat. It's I sick, just, fat, just, and anxious. Yeah. You right. go to Google. And has allergies to weird stuff. Yes. You go to Google and you search for U.S. military draft and there's just tons of articles making sure everyone knows there will not be a military draft. You want to know what that Thank makes me think? Thank you for that. That there's definitely a draft. That there's definitely <laughs> going to be a draft. It no, makes, but how could there not no, be? This makes me think, this makes me think that they are going to have one but right now they're telling you no no we're not going to have one but then something huge has to happen yep. where everybody's going to get behind it and say yeah like another 9-11 and they say oh yeah I, we has need to be it. worse has and to be worse it does absolutely at this not, point see I, I, or maybe not with with 9-11 the issue was that americans felt attacked so a bunch of people were like i've got to do my duty and defend my nation so they enlisted <laughs> little do they know that they're going to be sent to iraq and afghanistan for nation building projects mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but uh the, the the people who enlisted and signed up for this that wasn't completely noble and then you have corrupt powers that beat it, be that exploit, manipulate. Well, that was DeSantis. Consi That's when DeSantis signed up. Considering that we're in dire straits now, militaristically, like recruitment rates are really, really low. Mm -hmm. It may not be, it may not be so much about, it, it may just be they're going to force people to do it, right? With 9-11, you had people who are willing to do it. Mm -hmm. If something like that happens now, right, we got all, all this reporting about an open border and potential terror attacks with, and, 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 and the war that's happening in, in in the Middle East. Yeah, they might just be like, we have no choice. However, it will be, they, they, there will have to be something 9-11-esque. Well, it would be like Vietnam. Remember how, I mean, there were so many young men who got called up to Vietnam who had no idea what they were doing mm -hmm. and ended up just being essentially massacred. Like that yep. was a, that it's was tragic. a pretty it's horrible crazy. situation. And because we had a lot of, um, we had weak nationalism at the time. Um, and we had a bunch of men called up who didn't know what they were doing. And I think that the young men we have now are probably far less qualified than my father's generation was to go to Vietnam. Yeah. I mean, they regularly fail basic fitness tests. Right. I think it's so I, I've been talking to some members of special ops military forces for story I'm working on. And it's interesting because if you from the anecdotal uh, evidence that I have, you know, people who want to be in special force, they want to be Green Berets, they want to be Navy SEALs, mm -hmm. they tend to be even more elite. Those standards have gone up just because of who is electing to be a part of them. It's, you know, Division One athletes, mm -hmm. it's former professional athletes, people who are in the best shapes of their lives. But just the infantry, which is really what all branches of the military need, these basic levels, uh, those standards are lower and they're regularly mi missing their recruitment goals. I mean, right. and the military is in a position where they are beginning to sort of alter their reporting numbers to make it look like they're not doing as badly as they could as we go into the brink of World War III. I mean, it's not a good position. There is no way they don't end up drafting people if they ultimately decide we are I at do, war. Th I do think that there's a difference, though, as well. Like, I think that if the United States were attacked, as it was with 9-11, which is a different situation than fighting in foreign wars, I think that if there were, um, you know, there's there has been talk of these some, what, 5 million illegal immigrants who have come into the U.S. since Biden took office, that there could be terror cells among them. We have seen the um, the the great numbers of single young men entering the country with no real rhyme or reason as to what they could possibly be doing here. If we started seeing the kind of suicide bombings or, you know, terrorist attacks that, you know, Hamas unleashed on Israel in what, like the late 80s and into the 90s, if we started seeing that in the U.S., I think that you would see nationalism go up. I think that a lot of young people would be like, I'm going to fight for America because the, the fight has come to America. But I do think that there is a lot less of an appetite to send our children to go fight in foreign wars under this idea that we're protecting democracy when we're watching our own democracy and our own nation fall apart. I totally agree. I think I think there would be people who would say, I want to defend America, but I think they would be less likely to enlist and get deployed 
far away, they would want to stay close to their families. You might see an increase in like maybe the National Guard, but even that could be deployed internationally. I think people, right. if we saw an increase in, in domestic on the ground in the U.S. tax, the desire to protect would be there. I just think it would be a deterrent from joining the military. And they, they wouldn't join. They'd, they'd form a militia. Form a if, militia. If we're seeing You might see people join local States. law enforcement, yeah. but I think it, the chance that you could be deployed away from your family when you know there's an increase in, in well, domestic taxes. Well, it would be hard to, it would also be hard to join local law enforcement. The For kind sure. of laws that we've seen enacted against law enforcement officials um, has been pretty grave in the past several years. I mean, the the defund the police movement was shockingly effective, not just in actually pulling funds by city council of police departments, but changing the laws across the board. We had a report this morning. I came in to work this morning. Uh, I turned on my phone and I was at work, but I came the in. The commute morning. is crazy. <laughs> right, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, Ari Hoffman put this report together about uh, this uh, 911 call in Seattle that was made public. And on the call, it showed that um, there was like a domestic abuse situation. The guy was beating up this woman. She was like trying to get to her kid and protect her kid or whatever. He drags her into the car, uh, forces her to drive. She's being pursued by police officers and the police officers call off the pursuit because they're like, oh, we're not actually allowed to pursue unless yeah. there's probable cause of something. And they're afraid to pursue. That's true, I think, not just Seattle, but in Chicago, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. That's what was going on. It's like the police officers aren't allowed to give chase after a certain point. So the morale has got to be really low. And there are, you know, and like... Police recruitment is low. Police recruitment is low. And that's a big part of it, too. Like in New York City, they have been you know, cutting funds. Mayor Adams has been threatening to cut funds for police officers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And kids who are enlisting and thinking about joining a militia, they do have to know their constitution well because the government, the federal government does have the right to call up, um, call up the militias to, to fight. They're, that's written. But, it, but it's, but it's, yes. Mm -hmm. And if we, if we operate under the traditional sense of militia, that would matter. But all that really means is conscription. Because militia back in the day wasn't so organized. It was just the local men in the area would yep. take up guns and they'd fight if they if they had to. I think what we'd end up seeing is, is if there were attacks in the United States, people would look to their neighborhood watch or the neighborhood leaders and just be like, tell me where to stand. They wouldn't sign any papers or do anything formally. And really which would make it really difficult for the U.S. government. Well, mm -hmm. you know, that's oh, go ahead, Josie. So, I'm sorry. No, it's OK. So so really everything. So when it comes to war in the Constitution, it's written on a defensive stance. So it's Article 4, Section 4, and it, it says that it's the federal government's duty to protect the states from invasion. And I mean, we're in one, there's been declared one, you know, but that's really the only, that's the only thing it says it doesn't say anything about offense at all. all that. That's interesting about protecting states from invasion mm -hmm. because so many states have been invasion mm -hmm. invaded mm -hmm. by the federal government's yes. policies with this illegal immigration thing. Like, why I, I find it perplexing that states aren't standing up for themselves more. You have New York City being like, hey, it's too much. Mm -hmm. Well, New York City is like, come help us, federal government. Whereas Greg Abbott in Texas is like, I am invoking my right to defend Texas and then they as just the governor. Cut his, uh... And then they're like, stop doing that. Immediately <laughs> right, stop. stop. I think that's the craziest thing. I mean, we I'll probably all followed it for so long. But with that uh, floating buoy yes, barrier, right. at first they were like, it's not humanitarian. People could drown. He's like, yes, we should deter them from swimming and potentially drowning. And they're like, <laughs> we've changed our mind. You were supposed to get congressional approval. And then he was like, but no, I don't need that. I'm, I am here to defend Texas. And I think that's this weird position, the Biden position, the Biden administration is walking in. You'll get them, you know, authorizing through Mayorkas uh, more construction of the border wall. And then they immediately walk it back because mm -hmm. their policies are hurting the country and they know they have to act because not only is New York suffering, but Texas is suffering. There, No one is going to stand by them in this next election cycle if they don't do something. On the other hand, they said they wouldn't uh, build the wall. And so they look like hypocrites because they are. They're Should, only sort of board, building it. And they're building it not in the necessary places, from what I understand. I mean, Chicago they never do anything right. But <laughs> yeah, so Chicago actually had, um, they had the residents of Chicago, the black the black residents. And they were, because I guess they're sending a lot of migrants to Chicago. I love that the Chicago, black residents, the black residents were, like, were like, no, no, get out of here. They're like, we already get the crumbs and you want the crumbs of our crumbs? Like, <laughs> I sort of had this idea when I saw that, when I saw those people standing up in Chicago, I was like, maybe all us Americans can remember that we're all Americans and we're all on the same team and we don't have to like be divided up by these racial segregated ideas like, you know, black Americans are Americans and, you know, 
like white Americans are Americans and well, and illegal immigration. Latino Americans are Americans, and like we're here, let's protect our country. Yeah. Can we do that together? We used to be a melting pot, and the answer is kind of no. We I'm, can't. I mean, do the thing is, together. illegal immigration hurts impoverished communities more because it adds an additional burden to a, uh, a community that's already struggling. So, it makes sense to me that people who would feel as though they are disadvantaged would then be like, please close the border. Please stop. This is not helping us. It's just marketed as this thing like you're so you're so mean and they're just coming here because there is economic turmoil in their country. And ultimately, we know that that's not the case. Like in slim cases, people are seeking uh, asylum, but it's not the wide majority that the Biden administration would like it. To right. Be. Let's let's. And then you're I, destroying I a, Queens with a brutal mm -hmm. sex trade. I have a proposal. We have a story from the Post Millennial. And just let me read the title first for my, before my proposal. Four Iranian special interest aliens apprehended by Border Patrol attempting to cross into U.S. in October. Two Lebanese citizens were also arrested in Eagle Pass last week. All right. New rule. If you're going to deploy U.S. military forces into a region in conflict, you must lock down your borders. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a good idea. I think it's a great idea. That, why wouldn't you do that? That <laughs> it's, it's, it's why, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you secure your borders even outside of war? Well, it's sure. like if you knew that there was turmoil in your neighborhood, you'd probably lock your front door. Right? Why? Why are we defending the borders in Ukraine and defending the borders in Israel, but we're not defending our own border? No, no, our borders get to stay open because it's okay if our citizens suffer. We can't let citizens in other countries suffer, though. Is that, that would be fan bad? Boat? Are they coming in on fan boats? Have you seen some of the reporting? Called? I think that's yeah, the it's a fan boat, yeah. There's oh, been wow. some reporting. I have them all over. How cool would it be if they're coming in like hovercrafts? <laughs> you ever see those? They glide over the water, like the air pressure and the floats. Well, if, if you, you go to hilarious and also like, sad, I want to ride the reporting that. from the Darien Gap, it's like these long kayak looking type mm -hmm. boats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What if they were like, like throwing grappling hooks over trees and swinging across the river? If that's the case, then <laughs> let the them hook. in. Let's go. Let them in if that's the case. That is. <laughs> well, unless no, they have, like, no. <laughs> Close the border. Yeah, but if it's that cool. <laughs> but it's so cool. If, cool. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Wait, but wait, but if they paraglide over the border. <laughs> wait, wait. What if they swung from a tree and then when they released, they did backflip? I think you guys don't okay. understand. Definitely. No illegal immigration, no matter how cool the Even if they're anime superheroes. Look, look. I also love theatrics, but ultimately, I'm not going to give an exception. <laughs> for the best entry. It's the Cirque du Soleil Brigade. Is They're it, just like, like on their way. way under the it's, border. It's meritocracy, like like Tim said, and our country is founded on meritocracy. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it checks flip. out. It checks okay, out. Okay, but in all seriousness, uh, our border is porous and busted. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're deploying troops to go protect other people's borders. Yeah. And we have potential war, wartime threats to this country. Iranian special interest aliens. And it's not saying overt terrorists or anything like that. Do you want to, actually, do you know the story, Libby? I mean, it's your, your, it's uh, your I didn't write it lit. today, you know. I didn't write that one, You know actually. everything that goes up on Postmillennial every Yeah, you have to know <laughs> everything. <laughs> so here's uh, the point. Yeah, no, I As Lindsey really Graham well. is threatening to bomb Iran. Does it look okay? We want to be very careful about who we're letting into the country after one of our senators threatened to bomb their country, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the real risk is not, we're not even talking about economics or whether it's cool how they enter. That, that's obviously a big joke. Yep. The threat is, yo, are we letting spies into this country to attack us? Yes. Okay. We yeah. do that all the that. time. This is the thing. Like, <laughs> we, under the guise of being able to say, this is a humanitarian issue, we need to be nice, we just let anyone enter. So why would another country not be like, we'll just send some military aid meds? We just will send a spy because you can get through the border. Well, this, this is, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I can rant about this all day long. <laughs> this, is I will be <laughs> this is in addition to the 151 individuals on the FBI terror watch list who have been admitted to the country since yeah. um, Biden took Didn't office. they say that they lost track of like 24? terrorists they lost track of a lot of people they've yeah. lost track of children I mean, who are being now like sold into domestic sex, slavery, and sexual yeah. slavery oh yeah absolutely but so, that way they get to be here when it happens like i i just don't understand this argument for why anyone would benefit from an open border everyone suffers and the biden administration passes off as like these there's actually Republicans. over seventy thousand special interest aliens that they have encountered but what does that border. mean special interest are we talking about terror threats well let's see what it means because I know that we, we've, we've specifically talked about it's people It's an illegal terror. alien from a nation that either promotes terrorist activity, harbors terrorists, or poses a possible security threat. So what that is, these are people who President Donald Trump said, we're not going to let any of these people into the country. And he was called Islamophobic for Oh, that. yeah. Was, was this the Muslim ban? Yeah. It oh, was, it was the Muslim ban. Yeah, it was the Muslim ban. Yep. It was a Muslim it was ban plus North Korea and Venezuela. Yep. So yeah. Yep. And then today, plus, it was North Korea, the Muslim, Muslim capital plus. of the world. <laughs> the DeSantis campaign <laughs> started being like, when is Trump going to talk about what he would do about terrorist illegal immigrants? And it's like, what do you... 
You you mean how about what he did? He doesn't have to talk about what he would do. He yeah, had he policies, said he was gonna... and he did things when he was in office. He kept people no, no, out. No, 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 he recently he, did, and he, he did posted, today. He, yeah, he as posted well. a meme of crocodiles, and today in, also in, in, in a moat. <laughs> yeah, Greg Abbott's like, please send the crocodiles. <laughs> I don't know if the crocodiles could survive because if they could, they'd just be there already. But it would ruin uh, vacationing the, in the Gulf. Honestly, shore. a few crocodiles would just stave this off we know to stay away from the water in florida like ben, ben shapiro made a great point uh earlier about he said the west doesn't need to commit suicide to protect refugees you might want to pay attention to who you're letting into your country it doesn't mean we blame citizens and civilians in conflict he was like we're not going to blame the the, the the civilians in 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 palestine but we're not going to open the door just let everyone come well, in the when arab they hate countries us. the arab countries aren't letting in these refugees egypt's not egypt's not you know well, and so the, also, so the, there's no reason that we should. You have, what's his name? Jabal, Jabal Bowman in New York mm -hmm. saying that we should take in Palestinian refugees from Gaza. The, the, uh, the fire alarm yeah, puller? I wouldn't the fire trust a guy on, on that who doesn't even know what a fire alarm is. Yeah. Well, I frankly like. would probably not trust anyone from Brooklyn on yeah, their yeah. take from that. And she can say that because she's from New York. She lives <laughs> so, in Brooklyn. It's not a hate crime. <laughs> so aren't there standards for asylum and they're just like rubber stamping everybody yep. instead of like yes, being they, like, no, you don't meet the requirement for asylum. So maybe they should just start enforcing rules that already on, exist. Hold on. You know, we, have to, we have to rules, combine the, the previous segment with this segment. We don't have enough people to fight in our armies. And so we oh. import all these illegal immigrants Put and then the we say, lines. that's right. That's <laughs> right. Hey, you want citizenship? All you got to do is fight for us. I mean, we did it before in the Civil War. Yeah, yeah Irish that's the classic. Some, some but it's, but it, it, it is common. They offer non-citizens a path of citizenship yeah, by serving in the armed forces. It's true. It's that's Canada's a pretty, same. I mean, that's not just an American thing. That's a classic thing throughout history that right. nations have done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that how, na like, like, didn't Rome do something like that before yep. Yep. collapsing? Rome, Rome did. did yep. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we did that oh, in the boy. Revolutionary War, I believe. Yeah, and, and the, Civil the Civil War. Yeah. Well, the Revolutionary and there was War was French intervention. Well. The, right. the Crown had the mercenaries. French helped a lot. Right, right, right. Yeah. They had like the Hessians. No, I remember that we story. can't ask people who came here illegally to become citizens. You guys are crazy. That I'm would not be ridiculous. On, I, I'm not on board with this plan I mean, either. I think that we should probably have something like... I just think that's, like that's the policy. Huge like, they, levels of deportations and just be like, no, you're done. Like, this is not going to work out. That seems Take the entire Roosevelt Hotel and just like... Yes, move yes. out deportation but to ukraine i just think the biden administration doesn't <laughs> want they to offer fight citizenship in the war. and they don't want to offer a pat like they like that there's they an do illegal want population i mean here. what's going on is it's not that they don't want to offer citizenship they do want to offer citizenship they're just going to do all of this incrementally incrementally they're doing it slowly just one little tiny step at a time so that the next one seems inevitable and then the next thing seems inevitable and then the next thing you know we They're have gonna, five million new citizens because they had an amnesty. Didn't Reagan do an that. amnesty? They're going to have like an agreement where it says like, you know, sign up for the U.S. armed forces or go fight in Ukraine and you will earn citizenship. And there will be like an asterisk next to it. Then at the bottom of the page, it'll be like, see addendum 5E, which is not attached to this contract. And then when you search the, like the, the paperwork online, it'll be like citizen of Ukraine. <laughs> Right. I'm okay Citizen with offering of illegal somewhere. immigrants off, uh, citizenship in Ukraine. That seems fine to me. Uh, I mean, I mean I, I, argue for what, it. what if, what if, the, I mean, honest question, I still think it's probably bad, but what if the U.S. was like, we're going to take all the illegal immigrants and send them to go fight in Ukraine? Well, does a, like, does one country People would the, stop coming. Yeah. I think they would. I think Zelensky would be mad because he'd be like, no, you haven't trained them properly. And now I have this population of people who don't really know how to fight. And it's but, kind of an ethno state. You know, what are we supposed to say? Well, but you got to you got to just do you got to take the, uh, the, the the Soviet approach, which was, I might add, appropriated by Zap Brannigan in the future in Futurama as a joke, where you just send wave after wave of your own men to die and eventually overwhelm the opposing force. And I'm not kidding. That's literally the Soviet method. That's what they've done every time. Yeah, the Soviets it's just very like effective. just take a bunch of low quality garbage and just smash it in that direction. Isn't that what China does too, basically? Yeah. And then the Nazis in World War II were like, we want the best technology, the premium. That's and then what when I'm it, doing. Yeah, and then when it blows up, you have you have like 10 tanks. They're really great. And then eventually one goes down. The Russians were like mass produced the worst yeah. possible tank. They're doing that now. Yeah. They're making, they've turned some of their factories over to like full tank manufacturing yep. jeez mm -hmm. they did that they did that months and months ago in fact yeah that's true There's i think i think we covered that at human events uh, look with with the, these stories that we're getting these these horror horror stories like the guy who killed the six-year-old kid 
The kid died, right? Yeah. That the story? kid died. Yeah, that guy looks like, like a total too, crazy man is. too. But but homeless, we're, I I I, well. I think we're going to. He was he was a landlord. He was, was he the he landlord? Was their he was the landlord. landlord. Really? Yeah. Oh, I'm being yeah. very bigoted. That was the opposite. Homeless. He wasn't yeah. just not only was he not he was homeless, a, but he owned more home. Yeah, he could no, have voted I, during the colonial period. Yeah, I think I think we're going to see some kind of like major terror attack in the next year. I believe, I agree with you. What they're the, what they're doing right now, it's kind of a process that they use to capture different countries. It's demoralization, destabilization, crisis, and normalization. And usually they kind of do it in order. They're like just demoralize everybody, and then they destabilize everybody, and then they create a chaos, and and then they normalize it. But what we're seeing America do is throw it all, throw it all down, and see what sticks. So they're normalizing mm -hmm. parts of the chaos, and they're demoralizing everybody to destabilize them. While they're destabilized, they're more demoralization, and it's just. And that's why everything feels so chaotic because it is. We feel like we're moving in fast forward. It does feel very, very quick. It yes. feels like weeks take months, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't believe it's mid-October already. Yep. That's crazy. It's crazy. September we like, We go to Miami for a week. It's like 80 degrees outside. We're at, we, you, <laughs> skating is so hard. We come back from Miami and now it's 40, it's 45 degrees. Oh, that like, was a great show, by the way. Congrats. Oh, that was, it was fun. It was a yeah. terrific event. We're it thinking, we're, really thinking we're going to do uh, Pittsburgh in March. Pittsburgh. Ooh, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. <laughs> because it's so easy to just drive there. Mm. It but is anyway. easy to drive there. I watched somebody lose like $19,000 at a blackjack table in casinos Pittsburgh. Casinos are in Pittsburgh, Tim. We can go. Well, there's casinos everywhere. There's casinos yeah. Here. No, when I, I went to yeah. Vegas, terrifying. I watched a guy lose terrifying. like 50 grand in 10 minutes and he didn't seem to care. And I'm just like, oh, this guy seemed like he was getting uh, increasingly angry, but who really looked upset was his wife, who just like looked terrified. That was a scary <laughs> She's moment. She's like, this is not a fun vacation to Pittsburgh. This is not <laughs> great. And I think they live there. I'm excited <laughs> for a Pittsburgh show. Yeah, well, be interesting. that sounds great. Ladies and gentlemen, we may uh, have, some, we have some breaking news here. I'm seeing this. This was just tweeted out by Jesse Waters. Take a look. Joe Biden to visit Israel on Wednesday. Didn't I say this like 20 minutes ago? That, he was, that he Joe did. Biden was going there? Yeah, yeah it, tomorrow. Oh, okay. You wow. said it quietly. You I didn't announce it in a, in a okay. cool radio well, host voice. No, that's Monday. a good point. So he's Monday. going there Wednesday, right? He's, yeah, going, he's right. going there Wednesday. Wait, it's not Tuesday? Yeah, it's not Tuesday. It's impossible to say what day it is. Um, Sorry, everyone. It seems like a really bad idea for Joe Biden to be going to an active conflict zone when but, rockets are blowing up. Over but the maybe city. that's maybe, the plan. Yeah. Maybe this is your Gavin Newsom rises to the occasion moment. Yeah. yeah I was, I was kind of thinking that. Yeah. And I mean, that's this is worse than 9 11 to lose be, our president. It does <laughs> seem like it could be kind of a setup. It could be the linchpin, you know. Well, let's think about this. Yikes. How do you get rid of Kamala Harris? Everyone says if Joe Biden bows out, Kamala's next in line, she has to run. Is she going with him there? What I'm not saying that. I'm saying what if Joe Biden, you know, God forbid something bad happens when he's over in Israel, which right. is the casus belly for US intervention in the region. Kamala Harris assumes the role uh, office of the presidency and then steps down at the end of the term and it, and, it, and it goes to a new candidate. Oh, I see. Mm. Though there one way that feasibly Kamala Harris drops out is that she actually serves and then says, "I I did my duty." And now I'm mm. going to be stepping down. I really she, think she would drop out. I think that she would be unburdened by what might have been. I was going to say, I, stick it out. I think it, it no, would be we're a, talking about the CIA. a very intense internal battle because I think she would not want to give up the shot. At she is first. power hungry. I completely yeah. disagree. I don't think she would win. I think, she's but a I think she wouldn't want to go. She's a Muppet. She's just like, clearly the lady can't talk. Have you ever heard her give she a speech? She says the same thing over and over and over again. She says every nothing. Speech. She really doesn't want to be there. No, no she's, um, she laughs and says nonsense. Right. She got And her... so if, if the plan from our intelligence apparatus was to get in a, new, a new candidate who is going to actually be able to inspire to some degree, it ain't Kamala. And Kamala's not going to do it because they're going to tell her no. Joe yeah. Biden is here now. And it's not so much about Joe Biden not being a part of the deep state or, whatever, or the bureaucratic state or the administrative state. It's that you need a clean PR exit. If Joe Biden goes, I'm too old, I got to go. Everyone's going to say, OK, what about Kamala? Uh, we also know she can't win. Right. If something bad happens to Biden, deep state gets its war, its casus belly. Kamala Harris then assumes the role for the next year and or year and a half and then says, I did my duty. I'm now going to hand it off to those who are more capable, yada, 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 and honorably hands the, the passes the torch down to somebody else. And yeah. she she served as vice president, first female, whatever she wants to identify as vice president. Sometimes it's Asian, sometimes it's black. First um, female president. Yep, first one. Yep, and she also got to serve for like one day as president because Joe Biden had to go under anesthesia for like a colonoscopy. Oh, right. So, <laughs> so, so she already was the first president right. that was female. So, so it's all out of the way. It's, it's oh, gotten geez. out of the way, so she doesn't have to serve now because yeah. she's already been one. But assuming the role for a short period would be like 
I think legitimately it's, hitting that hitting yep. that marker. I think it's the ideal case for her, and I think it just depends on how entrenched she is in uh, obeying her commanders, right? Mm -hmm. I I think True. if she's but the thing about Biden is that I think he does not want to go. He will put up a fight. He wants to retain power for as long as possible. Maybe Kamala is more compliant and she would exit after, you know, half a term or whatever she has left to serve. I just think all of these people are so power hungry that once they get into the chair, they don't want to leave it. I how believe many... that she can serve for two full terms after yes. the midpoint. So she can serve for 10 years. How many people in this country would support U.S. intervention into the Middle East, particularly the Israel region, Israel, uh, Jordan, uh, et cetera, how many people would support that if Joe Biden was critically wounded by yeah. Hamas? Yep. Or Hezbollah. Yep. Or Iran. Yeah, Iran. Yeah. I mean, look, I'll 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 say right now, I, I imagine all of the neolibs are going to outright be in favor of it. We are all going to find ourselves sharing talking points with many leftists who are anti war, not because they agree with us, but because they will exploit whatever the, the, the modern the modern narrative is to gain power. And if their support is for Palestine, we will all say something like foreign intervention is a mistake. It'll cause World War III. And they'll parrot those talking points in an effort to try and seize power. You will then get someone like Ben Shapiro, who will undoubtedly say they they this is these are terrorists who have killed Israelis. And now they've targeted our president and our administration. The U.S. absolutely must, must. You're going to get every conservative, like 90 percent of conservatives. Mm -hmm saying the U.S. must intervene. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think there would be huge support I, for I military intervention if they went after the president. But it does seem ridiculous that we're putting the president in directly in harm's way. Yeah, it is ridiculous. Especially Rockets are exploding go, over Tel Aviv right now. And he wouldn't go to, what, Palestine, Ohio? Yeah, but he I will know. go here? Like, yeah. what is going on, Biden? Why He also I won't go to the border still. I, I don't understand this risk management. Why is one thing okay when we know there is very violent active conflict, but the other places that they kept saying, no, it's fine, he won't go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This doesn't make sense. Yeah. Also, I think Blinken is in charge. Barely. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but like... It seems like it. I think he's the one who's making all of the all of these decisions. And he was just in talks for seven hours. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I mean, now we need Biden to come in. Biden are a very effective and charismatic leader. So that he can like <laughs> fall off the stage in Jerusalem instead of. It's rough. <laughs> I don't like this. It, it just we look so I'm worried about weak more than internationally. Off the stage. Yeah, yeah, I'm worried I mean, about rockets exploding, right. the I, Iron Dome failing. Mm -hmm. It's um, almost like he's intentionally being set up. Yes, how could you, you know? not feel that way? That's what it looked like to me earlier today. And I was like, no, that's crazy. Remember, don't think that. Remember what but Obama said to Joe? You don't have to do this. Right. What he was really saying is, Joe, don't, don't sacrifice yourself for this country. <laughs> Going back to how many people would be in favor of, of uh, something if, the, if it happened to the president. I mean, I think Congress had something like a 90% approval rating when it came to 9-11. And everybody was just so in favor of war, so in favor of the Patriot Act, so in favor of justice and redemption. And, mm -hmm. and so I think that it wouldn't be that high, but I think it'd be probably like 70%. You know, if we can kind of think about how, what percentage of conservatives would be behind it, what percentage of neolibs would be behind it, we could probably get a pretty rough estimate about it. It's 70%. a legitimately difficult question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would would any any of us here, would any of you watching, let, let's not let's not enter, like, let's say Joe Biden on good, on good faith, let's say on good faith is trying to actually de-escalate and he's going there to tell them, Joe Biden's already publicly stated he, he they should not invade Gaza. So, okay, let's say on good faith, Joe Biden really is trying to de-escalate. If Hamas attacks and and in any way removes Joe Biden, I'll be very light on my language. Would you, listening, comment below, let me you think, support U.S. intervention to go after those who committed the act that, that you know, targeted our president? I, no? for one, could really use another fool around and find out tweet. From... <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. What if Donald Trump then says, as much as we think Joe Biden, look, we think he's crooked, but, <laughs> and then he decides we are going after the terrorists. Has he, what is he, has, how has he been on Israel or even Ukraine for that? He, he just put out a statement saying he will not allow the refugees or the, the, the these people coming. He, he still seems America first. Mm -hmm. He's very America first, but yeah. he's also, he's also said that he stands with BB uh -huh. and he Everyone said, says, I stand no. with BB and I stand with Israel. So, you know, I do think that he does. Israel's a longstanding ally. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm I'm fully in support of Israel's right to defend themselves. I will say mm -hmm. if if 
if our president were assassinated by a, a foreign agent mm -hmm. on foreign soil, I would recommend literally destroying whatever nation it, was behind it. It's the most impossible situation because you want to be, at least I would like to be as anti-interventionist, America first. Is this That's not anti-interventionist. That's retaliatory. It's retaliatory at that point. And that's yes. that's the difference. That's scary. I I'm think good if we can just keep the kids out of it. Yeah. That's true. But everyone in the chat is saying no way. Yeah. No, no way. No U.S. retaliation. If we have no retaliation to a presidential assassination by a foreign agent, then we have no nation. Because we're we're involved in yeah, a, a very that's, different that's way rough. than we are right now. I if, mean, if our president were assassinated on foreign soil by the CIA, and, <laughs> uh, this is kind of what we're, where uh, we're at see, now. I don't know. I'm like very, where it's like I'm the very US has discovered so oil in the I U.S. will be, so we'll be deploying pro. a military force to liberate the U.S. from the U.S. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, that checks out. I mean, there are. There are, you know, organizations in the world that really hate the United States and want to see us destroyed yes. fully. One of those is Hamas. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I wonder if know, people would be Hezbollah saying this as if, well. if Donald, like, here's another question. If Joe Biden was sitting in the White House and the White House got attacked and foreign agents, you know, took the life of Joe Biden in the White House, should there be a, a yeah. retaliation? Yeah, fully yeah. and swiftly. Article Very, 4, Section 4, that's what our military is there for. Very fully. It's defense of our but nation. But what about Ron, destruction. Ron Paul had the view that we should issue letters of mark, mark and reprisal. Oh, those are cool. To target specifically the actors who did it and mm -hmm. not declare war on entire nations, right? So when it came to 9-11, his argument was Al-Qaeda did this. It's not Iraq. It's not Afghanistan. We should have issued letters of mark and reprisal and gone after Al-Qaeda specifically. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so if anybody doesn't really know what letters of mark are, it's, it's in the Constitution. It's like uh, something article, something section eight, clause 11. Um, it's it's essentially that they can make Americans mercenaries or make Americans honorary pirates, essentially. It's the honorary <laughs> pirate clause, okay? So yeah. so if, you, if we get in a sea war or a land war with Russia or China or Iran or whatever, um, the Congress can write these letters of mark and say, oh, you own a boat? You get to be a pirate now. And then you mm -hmm. get to go be a pirate. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, like after 9-11, yeah. they there's, there's actually, a fireboat. Yeah, and there's actually civilian. more to this clause too or how they've interpreted it. Like you get to take their booty and <laughs> and but you have to split the booty with Congress. That was kind of the original reading of the letters of Mark. Nancy but, Pelosi's got to get hers. Get a boat. <laughs> this is and, what people don't realize. Pirates were, were basically under crown protection mm -hmm. yeah. during like Pirates of the Caribbean. And, you see and the, the Barbary Pirates. pirates. I mean, but it, it just, it, it, there were so many more, mm -hmm. right? The, the Britain basically says, hey, go go disrupt French supply lines and we'll protect you. Yep. And then when France is like, you're attacking our ships, like, oh, those are pirates? Yeah, it's crazy. Would, would never. I think John Adams actually. Uh, it was John Adams. Yep, yep. Against the Barbary, the Barbary pirates. Yeah, yeah he, he was really, <laughs> he was working on negotiations with them. Yeah. It yep. was a whole big thing mm -hmm. to just try and get their ships to, to get across yep. so they could trade. Well, after the uh, War for Independence, the uh, uh, Britain was still kidnapping, capturing U.S. citizens and forcing them to serve on their ships. Crazy. Yeah. But anyway, in the in in, in the effect uh, in the instance that something does happen to Joe Biden. So here's a question: If so, if Joe Biden goes overseas and something happens to him, people have mostly said, "No, no, no, we should not intervene because of that." What if it's Donald Trump? What if Donald Trump went to North Korea to negotiate peace, crossed the DMZ, and then once he got up, you know, 50 feet in, they bashed him over the head and dragged his body off to a prison? Nuka. Should the U.S. then go to war with yes. North Korea, even totally. if it means China, and then China says, I don't says, think we should go to war with North Korea. I think we should destroy North Korea. And then China says, if you make any moves on North Korea, we will nuke New York. I would still say then we nuke them, too. That's World War Three. Well, yeah. but a, we're heading there anyway. If they right. destroy yeah. our if they kill our president, we're already there. Can yeah, we, I was going to say the president thing is is a level a, of engagement from the other side that we are not currently at. Can I mean, we encourage them everyone to saying also yes about bomb <laughs> Hollywood on top of New York City? I mean, can we can <laughs> what we about can the we children like Portland? What about the children? Yeah, we'll get the children it's out. Like, and we just uh, bomb okay. the movie stars. Remember the Simpsons Halloween special with Kang and Kodos? And they're like. We'll take all. We'll we'll take all of your members of Congress, and then Homer's was, Homer Marge like you couldn't get all of them, could you? <laughs> ah, just watch us, and they're like, all right. <laughs> Can we help? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh no, don't. Yeah, I was gonna say. I wonder what the Simpsons have predicted about this. Well, moment. a lot of a lot of people Swirling are saying uh, if if Donald Trump was was attacked or targeted, yes, we should intervene. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more of a political question than than anything uh, else. But I think that's the problem. Like, as much as I don't like Biden, he is still the president. So if another country, you know attacked him on foreign soil 
it is still a serious crime against America. It hasn't happened. I don't know why we are sending Biden there. It Again, is stupid. It is um, just very stupid. It doesn't make any this sense. Is, this is my concern. I mean, uh, there's look, man, you, you can be as anti-intervention as you want, but you're going to you're going to convince there, there's a lot of people who are going to be like, yeah, killing a president is is grounds for invasion. Yes, I fully think if, if like is. if anything, anything is ground for reprisal. It is quite literally killing our president. Yes, yeah. I fully agree with that. That's terrifying. Biden should not be going to a conflict zone like this right now. He is. It's very stupid. Makes no sense. But it's supposed Ohio to was him. too dangerous. Oh. Right. Yeah, no, it wasn't dangerous. The, I just didn't want to go. To it doesn't fair, make any sense. The border is probably too dangerous. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> well, apparently wrong. it's not as dangerous as this situation. So I don't really know what they're communicating to us. I, I, I think... This is the weird thing about the theatrics of the Biden administration is that nothing is logical, nothing makes sense. And so you have to sort of suspend trying to make it reasonable. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why we can have these conversations that are like, are they setting him up? Because it seems like they might be. Because it logic does seem really bizarre to send your president to an active war zone like this. Where you're deploying your Marines. Mm -hmm. Right. But everything and is where, fine. And where there's like active terrorists seeking to destroy the nation that he is going to visit. Mm -hmm. Is he yeah. going to be guarded by all those Marines? And are they going to like send the Marines over with Biden and then just leave the Marines there? Is that essentially what's happening? Maybe. Yeah. Well, the Marines are already in the area, aren't they? Already like they are probably not in yeah. the U.S. They're nearby. They're near yeah. our reporting. From they? I mean, they we've were, got a were, lot of guys in, in Germany, right? They were in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Yeah, many right. of them were in Kuwait. I don't know where these other guys are coming from, but uh, yeah, we're sending two thousand troops, and the president's heading there. Yo, know, this doesn't bode well. Mm. Did he, did he go to Maui in the end or did he not end up going no, to Maui? I'm going go to Maui. go hang out in the storeroom with all my food buckets and just you know, <laughs> turn the lights I'm off. I'm going to if I went to Maui because that's a good question too. I mean, that was the other one. Biden. He did go to Maui, yeah. He Ultimately did. Okay. He, did. he yeah. was on vacation in, in, in um, Utah, no, maybe? No, uh, what's the lake there? Uh, Tahoe. Tahoe. He was on and, vacation in Tahoe and he took a morning and an afternoon maybe, I think, and went to Maui. Oh, wow. And that was nice back. of him. Yeah, and, he, he, and, and, a and, jaunt. and Biden didn't go to New York on 9-11. He went to Alaska. But to be fair, New York is is too dangerous mm -hmm. for the right. president. He yeah. didn't go to 9-11. But he said he went to nine. He went to New York on 9-11 in 2001, oh, right. even though he didn't. He went with a little mm -hmm. congressional de delegation a few days after because he was literally in Congress giving a speech and there's video of it. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, to be yeah. fair. You know, a lot of it is that he's just a liar and he's always been. Mm -hmm. But he also does have like and I mean, it's quite literally like serious brain damage from like aneurysms and surgeries. So it's, it's not funny. I mean, it's, like, it's true. No, he, this is the leader of our country that we are now being like, hey, everyone's on the brink of tension. So let's send Joe Biden in to, to put things. <laughs> what? I hate his little old man walk when he walks around. He's going to walk up. The dementia shuffle is sad, but it's, it's really like, bad. it's not what I would like. And a president. That is, that is probably the better point that. Of all the people we need to be sending to Israel right. to like talk down the war, we're sending the worst. I it wonder. doesn't make sense. It's like we want <laughs> to get things to get worse. I Maybe we should send the CIA is like Biden go. <laughs> I think that they're doing it in the same way because so many people are invested in 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 this this war, and it's almost like yeah. it's it's almost like when George W. Bush went to. 9 into 9 11 and put his armor on the firefighter and i think they they think they're gonna get something like that, that kind and of imagery not yes exactly did did biden ever go to ukraine i know the first lady went to ukraine at one point kamala harris went too. kamala harris went did, but did joe biden go to ukraine i don't remember boris johnson went yeah, yeah. he did he did go to ukraine so I'm i think i now. think biden oh biden went and there In were like February. fake air sirens mm-hmm they they like set off air raid sirens and no one looked at all perturbed because they but were he fake went or something this year like a year into the conflict he went yeah he went so, after but and he went he to, waited some good time for to, this thing right. that we spent billions of dollars he also on. went Question. to Kiev which is different than if Biden was kidnapped <laughs> and and smuggled into Tehran and they put him on camera and they had him and they were like we have your president <laughs> should the U S invade Iran uh, we don't negotiate and, um, with terrorists also immediately sorry Joe we <laughs> immediately <laughs> defund the Secret Service who clearly did a terrible job or was complicit <laughs> all right yep yeah, yeah there if we he go. gets kidnapped I'm sorry but that <laughs> but I just mean, it's like, just a waste of money I'm just asking this hypothetical in 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 like would people support a U S invasion of Iran if they kidnap our president what's right? the chat like, saying about that the chat uh. uh Everyone's saying give Kamala a pay raise. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's wow. like, no. No, uh -uh. no, no. How dare you? 
I think obviously okay, what we would about have Trump? to do what we could to protect our president. Because- Trump would not want us to negotiate with terrorists. That's some of his ads is that Joe Biden negotiates with terrorists and look what happened. He's like, I don't negotiate and with terrorists. Could you imagine? No one like, would kidnap Trump him would because get out of go it. get him. Yeah. But also no, Trump no, would have, get out of it. They have yeah. Trump in like a chair and he's tied up. Trump would talk and they himself put a out camera on. Yes, he would. And, <laughs> and they're like, if you don't give us, you know, $5 billion, we, we you know, if you give, if you want your president released and then Trump rips the mask and he's like don't do it don't give him anything and they hit him and then he's like no and then you know like a movie no he'd yep. probably just get elected in that country you know like he's so charismatic yeah. he'd be like he's making some great points this new yorker <laughs> like can you be our president everyone's saying yes to trump, if it's trump we go in that's the if thing biden, I, no I, he's he's already already the issue is that biden, it's not about biden or trump it's about the representative of our nation uh, yeah mm-hmm. that's ultimately what it comes down to and i it's understand su- it's, it's on us that we have a super just an awful, really awful bad, representative, like, <laughs> no. leader of our nation. It's, That's it's on humiliating. Us. It, it is. Yeah, but it's on us that we don't have, have an inspirational president him. who we want to go see. I don't even want an inspirational president. I just want someone who can think thoughts all the way through from beginning to end. <laughs> That's too and high of a make standard. Good decisions and project mm. confidence and a little bit of insanity at the rest yeah, of the I world. I remember something can they I offer used you to do. Someone who falls upstairs. <laughs> I remember <laughs> something that they used to do with Trump when he would go and meet with foreign leaders, and they'd be like, "Look at you know." these people don't respect him at all. And they'd be like, like Justin Trudeau, like, like, you know, all femininely looking him up and down. <laughs> Do and, you want Justin yeah. Trudeau to respect it, you? Though? Exactly. Like, right. It, it, this is the <laughs> thing. And everybody be like, yeah, see the, the foreign world doesn't respect Donald Trump. It's like, really? Like, like, can, can we do, can we, can we talk about Joe Biden now? Can right. we talk about the respect? Also, Joe like, Biden. no one respects right. Joe Biden at no. all. Not at all. No, they're like, oh, not well, even his wife who let him run for president. Yeah, no, true, no, God, true. no. Yeah, they don't respect him at all. They, I mean, the border's wide open. Like, everybody lit their prisoners out to come to our country the mm-hmm. minute he got in office. I mean, you can track it right down to we January 20th or whatever the great first to the El Salvador president who put all those guys in prison so that oh, they're yeah, not Bukele. crossing yeah. the border. That dude's, that dude's in and out of the ballpark, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. El Salvador's killing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I mean, literally, Trump's like, not Trump, but Biden's been disrespected to his face. Like, he landed in China that time and they just didn't meet him there as yeah. if they didn't have the delegation and there. And he sat there and, oh, well, I guess, like, they'll figure it out. They said the same thing to Trump. Trump just turned around and left immediately because he mm-hmm. realized that they're, it's a big diss, bro. It's yeah. not really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they don't. For someone him. who got criticized for not being presidential, he would not have taken right. these diplomatic snubs. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Man, well, I'm really worried about was, Wednesday. Was, yeah. I, I don't know. like there's, it. There's, there's so, I mean, with the investigations into the Bidens, mm-hmm. if something bad happens to him, there's no political circumstance in which people are going to be all of it gone. I, all the under Biden stuff gone. Yep. All the Joe Biden, Burisma, Ukraine, all of it gone. Anything mm-hmm. bad happens to him. Mm-hmm. It, it's hey, dude. They're yep. like sacrificing their queen in, tra- in chess. You know what I'm saying? This like is they, what it feels oh, like. Oh, it is. It's the queen sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Uh, if you if you think he's like a person that can move anywhere on the board and do all these yeah, things, I don't, know I don't think he can move himself. I think someone else makes the decision, which is uh, right. how it mm-hmm. works with chess because mm-hmm. he needs somebody else's hand. He is, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, he's perceived as the most powerful person in the United States, like the queen. You mm-hmm. know, protects the king, but is the king the deep state? Who's the king? <laughs> we don't have a king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the deep state. Yeah, yeah, yeah king's the deep state. Don't. And they say it's time for you to go, Biden, to to, to to serve your country. This is what you need. And that's to do. the thing, because he, he'll kind of go down if something, God forbid, happens. Like nobody wants that to happen. Nobody wants. So nobody would wish that. But if something, God forbid, you know, happens, but yeah. it gives the deep state literally everything. Oh, I know. Yeah, it, the, nothing person. bad could like and this, come of that. And this move, him going to Israel, and this doesn't track. Like I said, no yeah. border. I mean, he didn't yeah. go to Ohio. He won't even go to New York. But he 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 went to Ukraine after a year of conflict. Yeah. But he puts We're a lid on things in by and noon. he's like, I'm going to Israel immediately. It doesn't make sense. That was the Monday after this war started. Yep. He put a lid on it by like 11.54 yep. a.m. Yeah. But they were still kind of putting out statements, right? They well, were sort of vaguely. I mean, you had KJP there on Twitter. Doesn't mm. make any sense. She is the worst. Yeah, she is. But th- they'll stick by her. That's I was kind of expecting That's her to not make it That's because she's a lesbian. So they have to stick by her because <laughs> she is a diversity hire Did because you? of her sexual orientation. And they... They put gender identity Above and who else. you Above like merit. to sleep with as the most important qualifiers <laughs> for how you get a job in the Biden administration. Did you ever uh, think I, you'd miss Jen Psaki? That was my question. Uh, no. But I kind of do sometimes. I, I don't watch her show, though. No, I don't watch her. I don't miss this, her that much. This, this, <laughs> this, I, this, just to add on to this briefly before we jump on the next story. It is so weird, the obsession with sex the left has. It's yeah, it bizarre. Is. Where it's, it's like, creepy. exactly what you're saying. You, you have these these hires where it's like, okay, and the job is crane operator, and who do you sleep with? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. uh, and so I'll just add to this, because uh, you guys know I've been playing Baldur's Gate. 
modern video game, AAA game comes out. Every character is trying to trying to have sex oh, yeah, with with, right. with your characters. Yeah. Like the, you have four different characters, you have a party, and you you play as each one of them. Each have their own storyline, but it's basically the whole game makes literally no sense because of it, and it's really annoying. And people have been complaining about it. But what happens is with this wokeness, they're like anybody can have a relationship with anybody. Mm -hmm. But it's just like the problem is when I'm going like on a on a on a job, right? Like we go to Miami. We're gonna go to Miami, and we're gonna go down and put on a show. The idea that everyone will be constantly trying to just like the only conversations you're having are about how you trust and love and want to have sex with each other is just like the weirdest thing imaginable. Also, that seems really <laughs> icky and kind of like it makes everything awkward. Yes. Yo, yeah. Not to mention and everyone in the is, game is racist in the game. Like this, like explicit, like people in the game are racist. Really? So it's, it's like yeah. I just uh, sex and racism, huh? Well, but I, so. I, don't, I don't mean to bring up just this one <laughs> game. My point favorite is things. Yeah. left popular it culture is. when it comes to the workplace professional, when it comes to entertainment is the most important thing is who you're banging. Yeah, that's yeah, the weirdest that's thing. I always thought it was weird. I have friends who work for some big, you know, corporate well, America true. type companies, and they will be like, "Oh yeah, I got, you know, I I've come out, and so therefore I got put on our LGBTQ whatever panel, and I help organize trainings at work." And there's sort of this weird industry that all hinges on the fact that you have disclosed who you're sleeping with or what your sexual habits are. Yeah, why would you want that, especially in some sort of structure corporate? Like this must be an HR nightmare somewhere down the line. Well, let, let's let's jump to this story from the daily mail and talk about victories against wokeness the inadvertent results of uh, what we're seeing now with israel and, and hamas billionaires who have pumped 500 million dollars into ivy league schools back out over failure to condemn the hamas terror attacks on israel harvard and upenn face losing hundreds of millions in future endowments up to 487 million could be lost amid rising tensions between israel and palestine billionaires ken griffin has requested harvard take a robust stance in defense of israel so uh, let's just put it this way. We've long talked about uh, defunding universities. It's happening. And it's happening because these activist groups came out in support of terrorists. Oh, there you go. Uh, they, they had a line, apparently. There was a line. But they created. They yeah. created these people. They created these monsters. These. This is, this is Dr. Frankenstein. They created this. And now they're like, oh, I guess this isn't very popular now. Time to undo the damage and look like heroes. Oh, that's crazy. Ken Griffin pledged $300 million to Harvard this year alone, but contacted the head of the university board to complain about the tepid response of President Claudine Gay. So he's apparently not hearing back and it looks like they're going to start pulling pulling their funding. The, Cla the Claudine Gay thing was really fascinating because she put out, so you had all of these student groups at Harvard, what was it, like 12 student groups and they all submitted letters basically in support of Hamas and like against Israel and they all put out these letters um, and then you had these companies, these CEOs were like, who is, who is in these student groups? We don't want to hire them. Mm -hmm. And then you had like alum and trustees, you know, complaining and saying, you know, we want to pull our funding out. You had Claudine Gay, the president of Harvard, saying, which I think she's right to say, is that she supports free speech. She supports the free speech of the students at the school, right? I'm always going to support the free speech, even though mm -hmm. I totally disagree with it. She came out and said that, but... This is at a university where people get deplatformed for not using the right pronouns or for saying that men aren't women. So it's a total yeah, it's hypocritical a grift. grift is exactly what she, it is. She's, it's trash. She, she supports free she, speech when it's when, when it protects it's convenient her. for her. Yeah. She she supports free speech because she doesn't have to say anything about these student groups and she doesn't have to say anything about the, you know, crazy ideological warfare that's been waged against the students of the United States, making them believe that terrorism is good. And America is bad, right? Yeah. Um, she doesn't have to do anything legitimate. She just has to like. So I, I, I support the defunding of these universities. I have long thought that the problem with the student loan crisis, the the schools should pay it off with their huge endowments. Yes. 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 Absolutely. I agree with that. And just it's sad to, for me, like just as a constitutional person, to think about how far, uh, how far Harvard has fallen. Like. John Adams went there. You know, John Quincy mm -hmm. Adams went there. Like, I mean, well, now just. But it hasn't been that hard in a long time. The Springfield Army used to be in Massachusetts. And it isn't now. Yeah, they moved. John Adams also, he defended the British soldiers during the Boston Massacre, yep. yeah, which and I have he's, immense respect yes, for. Yes, yes. So John even Adams. Even though he totally disagreed with them. Yeah, he 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 believes so powerfully that that they would get a free trial if they were defended well, because that's that's what people were like, okay? So he believes so powerfully in this that he's like, I will defend them myself. And his defense got, there were eight of them. His defense got six of them off and two of them, instead of death, were marked with an M. Mm -hmm. And that M just meant manslaughter. Wow. Um, yeah, so and that, and that was his doing that did that. And now it's like 
He was we are, so we are, we are. Oh my god, I loved him. But we were like, I love that you have a John Adams thing. I have a John Adams thing. I so, do. Have you ever yeah. seen Adams? Uh, no. Watch it. It's the best series ever. Um, so, so 1776 on Broadway. So, if you think about how far away we are, yes. So, if you think about how far away we are from from that, from John Adams representing the Redcoats and getting six of them off and two of them from death to a manslaughter brand on their hand, now look at like the J Sixers. Yeah, and the fact that the same judge, Judge Shutkin, who has been prosecuting January 6th defendants, uh, sometimes imposing sentences greater than the Department of Justice mm-hmm. even asked for, is now um, the the judge presiding over Trump's case, I think is absolutely insane. She has so much bias against him. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, she's being allowed to do this. She put a gag order on him today because they don't like his social media posts. They, yeah, because they don't want him to make fun of them. Right, mm-hmm. but also they don't want him to be able to speak in his own defense. Yep. And they know that the more he does speak in his own defense and the more they prosecute him, the more popular he becomes so, in the United States. We're just I have Harvard a conspiracy President about Gay this. to talk about free speech now. Mm-hmm. Well, I, know. I have a conspiracy about this. I feel like... They are doing this totally illegally, totally in front of our faces, totally unconstitutionally. And I, it's going to go to SCOTUS, who's going to be like, this was really unconstitutional what you did. We are overturning this. You know, he get him off of house arrest because he's never going to go to prison unless they build a new wing or whatever. But he's going to go to Mar-a-Lago, have an ankle bracelet or whatever. But they're going to say, OK, this is unconstitutional. And then Congress is going to rise up or all the deep state. And they're going to be like, this is why we need to pack the court, because this sure. court is biased for Trump. And, and and that's the only way to correct this ill. These are Trump judges that lit him off and it is undemocratic. And that's mm-hmm. that's what's going to happen. Which means we can't lose the House. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's the only okay. control that there is. And we don't have a speaker. Yeah. This 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 segment's supposed to be a white pill. And, you know, you guys are. Well, I'm sorry, do, you guys like, sorry. do you guys like Jordan? What do you, who, who do you like for speaker? Eh, I mean, Matt Gates. You but like he, Gates for speaker? I don't think he's he, right. Of course. Been I mean, so well, no, he, 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 I don't think he wants to do it. And there's reasons why it, it's not necessarily appropriate. I mean, he led the charge against McCarthy, but come on, how many people are actually doing anything? Jim Jordan's great, mm-hmm. but I mean, you're still going to get. He's not perfect. Now nobody is. He's better. He's than McCarthy. a big talker. He he talks right. a big big talk, big talk, but he doesn't always walk the walk. So well, he has a lot of investigations that he's working on. Yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, I think he could do a good job. I think we have to get someone. I think this has been fun in games, but it's time to get a speaker in place. And if it's Jim Jordan, then what about so a, I mean, I a don't speaker care. can be anybody. Like, who would you nominate for speaker, Tim? Trump. Yeah. Okay. Who would you <laughs> nominate, Libby? If I was nominating for someone for speaker, mm-hmm. um, I would have to look into it a little more. I don't. I would not nominate Trump for speaker because I would like him to be president, mm-hmm. and I don't. He think can be. That what? He can be. So he's gonna fight. Five cases against him, four of which are criminal. Once he's speaker, those cases probably federal. evaporate. Yeah, those cases go away. <laughs> uh, I would nominate I, Ron Paul. I would nominate? I don't see him as. as I speaker. mean, Ron Paul's interesting. We'd love to see him do stuff. Mm-hmm. I do think that he's old enough now where maybe How dare you? it wouldn't be effective. <laughs> Look, I believe he will just live old forever enough. and 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 preside over our country yes. in our hearts and in our minds. But uh, this is sort of the the argument uh, against people being too old and being forced to work forever. I think that's not actually good for American culture. Um, like Diane Feinstein was working literally, literally until, until she, she died. died. And is this like Ruth what Ginsburg. we want? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ruth Bader I, I don't, too. I think that's gross. Right? I really hope that when I'm that age, when I'm like substantially younger than the age Diane Feinstein was when she died, I just get to like hang out with grandbabies. Yeah. <laughs> this is what I think, this is what I pray I think for. this is what bothers me about American politicians is, you know, Feinstein didn't get into the Senate until she was 60 anyways, mm. right? So then she was in for essentially for decades and died while serving. I don't think that that sets a good precedent for the culture that they are writing into the law, right? We need a culture that supports a work-life balance and promotes people to spend time with their families. I don't like Mitt Romney, but I do understand why he was like, I'm going to be in my mid 80s if I run again. Maybe someone else should do this job. Um, and so with Speaker of the House, I would love to see someone young enough. I, Ron Paul would be great. A, a disciple of Ron Paul, perhaps. I just can't name one off the top of my head. I think it's one of those things. Dave I have Smith. To carefully research. Dave Smith. Dave Smith can be Speaker of the House. But he doesn't that would want... be great. He'd yeah. be roasting oh, these people. Awesome banging the gavel be. and being like, you know, it'd yep. be awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. it could be good. I kind of like Jordan. 
I just think we have to do someone at this point. You know, well, like, like if we're if 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 we're going like pie in the sky, make your wishes come true. Uh-huh. It's not Joe Jim Jordan. Rogan. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan. <laughs> but I mean, you want somebody who knows. How, I mean, yeah, you want some house politics, speaker. Yeah. The house speaker has to be an operator, whether we like it or not. Like that's Dude, part of the job. Have yeah. you ever seen the meme explaining like what the Joe Rogan podcast is? And it's like, it's like a breakdown of it's like it's like basically a script written out, and Joe's like. So he mentioned something about peanuts growing in trees and then someone says peanuts uh-huh. don't grow in trees actually grow underground and he goes wait what what do you mean and then it's like Jamie pull that up and then he's like whoa peanuts grow underground he's like yes peanuts grow. he's like wow it would be- and then he says something like he's like the, the meme is he goes yeah they, they couldn't grow in trees because squirrels would F them up could you imagine that squirrels would be effing up peanut trees squirrels are basically like little chimps <laughs> it would make C-SPAN so interesting if Joe Rogan was dude it'd be the, the most interesting nobody would turn it off yeah. there's a reason why he's got the I'm biggest sorry, podcast C-SPAN, in the world you should be lobbying for Joe Rogan to be speaker of the house yeah. if you want your ratings to go right up. and then get some get some new ad deals oh for my Congress. gosh it's so suddenly funny. it's legitimately it depends idiocracy on, depends on do we want do we want an entertaining time or do we want a productive time mm-hmm. and maybe Joe Rogan would be productive. I'm I just telling you, there'd be nothing I really like just it. Want, I really want the borders closed. I want right. us to do this that's what Trump I want. Trump would be really entertaining this, too, no, on top no, tr- of it all. But yes, would anybody... But this is why Trump... Trump no, because would, Trump, no one's going to be able to go against him. Trump's going to come out and be like, we need to impeach Biden. Who wants to run against Donald Trump? You, you're going to go up for re-election in a year, and you're going to be the one guy who said, I told Trump no. But the Senate wouldn't take up any of the legislation that they passed, and it would never yeah, so get what? past the... The president's death. There's still uh, subpoena power. There's he's going to be like, it we have investigate. That now. We're gonna, and yes, and Jim Jordan is he going to do it? Maybe. Well, House McCarthy didn't do had it. Had a thing today. Donald Trump will say, "I want subpoenas on these people," and then the the moderate Republicans they call him will have to go back to the districts and say, "We told Trump no." Knowing Trump's approval rating and his and his polling levels, they're all going to be like, "I can't take that risk," yeah. unless they want to join the Democratic Party. <laughs> Which many of them might, well, not many, I'd say maybe a handful would be like, fine, I guess I'm a Democrat now. I really don't think so. Yeah. It's all going the other direction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think they don't even change their party. They just become, because because what they did, they made they made it like, these are the, re- the way that they, they break up MAGA Republican versus every other Republican. It's to be like, no, you can be a Republican. You can be Adam Kinzinger and you can be Liz Cheney, but you cannot be Matt Gates. Like this is the that, difference. That's the line. They, they that's write too far. Yes, they write. They write. You know, articles. They're, I think the New York Times. You could probably pull it up. Wrote an article about the difference between Republicans and MAGA Republicans. Just like a tutorial, so you knew what was good Republican and what was bad Republican. But this is a divide and conquer technique. This is well, yeah, because they want to maintain the uniparty. Yes, that's exactly. what it's really all about. Let's let's go back to the culture war stuff because we had that uh, that white pill article. I want to read you this article, ladies and gentlemen. To make things happy. We got big news. Deadline reports the Daily Wire is making a live action Snow White movie starring conservative YouTuber Brett Cooper. Watch the teaser. Uh, it's for their, I, I think Bent Key is their children's streaming service. Conservative media company Daily Wire is making its own live action uh, adaptation of the Brothers Grimm fairy tale Snow White called Snow White and the Evil Queen. The film, which is set to release in 2024, will be the first feature length production of the company's kids entertainment platform called Bent Key, which will star Brett Cooper, host of the platforms show the comment section. They have the trailer here. Uh, you can watch it. I, I don't. I don't want to play it. I, or maybe we should. How was know. it? Did you watch it? It's really short. I'll just. I'm just going to play it because I think it's news relevant. Once upon a time, in time, a prince would come. Is this Brett Cooper singing? Yes. Once upon a time, but now that time is gone. Okay, I'm really excited, but I only have one issue. I don't think they should have cast Brett Cooper. Mm. Yeah. I guess. Because, uh... I just feel like if you're a political commentator and personality, trying to push you into scripted and fiction is just kind of like, you know, <laughs> like for Ian, it kind of makes sense because he's not a political commentator personality. He is an actor first. And it's kind of obvious in the way he views politics. You know, no offense, but I think people understand he's not this is not his main thing. But then when they watch him do like the bits and the shorts and the cast castle stuff, they're like, wow, you know how to act. Well, well, yeah, it's like that's his thing. Mm-hmm. But I will say. What's really funny about this is, you know, Disney's putting out their new Snow White, 
and they're doing this like Snow White and the Seven Companions thing, right? Where they got rid of the dwarves because okay. Peter Dinklage didn't want anyone, any other dwarves to yeah. have. Jobs. And then other yeah. dwarf people were like, "Why are you ruining rules for us?" We right. Were I think that's so ridiculous, especially when you look at the Wizard of Oz and how all of those dwarves got to meet each other and mm-hmm. start mm-hmm. families and fall in love and stuff. Yep. Like the hell, Peter Dinklage. Yeah, he's like. But I will, I will right? say. Brett Cooper fits the role substantially better than Rachel Zegler, or Ziegler, oh, yeah. whatever her name is. Definitely. She also probably likes it better. Yep. I mean, right. Rachel Ziegler she's, hates the role. Yeah. She hates, hates the Snow story. White. But like, I, I, I'm, I'm actually really interested to watch the Disney version. I, I haven't had Disney Plus since that uh, uh, the the concentration camp thing they supported. Mm-hmm. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm not going to watch it. The concentration? You mean the Gina Carano thing? No. Disney Plus thanked the uh, uh, security forces in, uh, was it in it, Xinjiang? Yep, yep. Xinjiang. Yeah, where, where, where the where uh, concentration camps are. Mulan. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mulan action, yep. Yeah, and I was like, um, that's that it for That is really Disney creepy. For mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm I didn't not gonna... even see that. I think you will see ourselves out. <laughs> I'm like, Disney does a lot of things that I think are cringe and woke, and I always tell people like, yeah, but... I don't expect everyone to just cancel all of their, uh, oh, we got to think about, they cancel all their entertainment right away. We need to create alternatives. But like when they thanked the security forces that are enforcing, like- That the, we acknowledge as a genocide. Yeah, you know, like, you know I'm just not going to give you any money. But, uh, but anyway, I'm really interested, despite all that, to see how they handle the seven companions. <laughs> it's yeah, like, can't even which one's going to be case. like dopey and doc and you know what I mean? Oh, they're probably going to be like wokey and, you know, they, them- and do you remember hair. do you remember when marvel tried doing like the new mutants i think it was yeah and they had snowflake and safe space were two yep. of the characters they yes, had made this oh, is yeah. what they're going to do with them they can't they can't insult people by calling them sneezy that's 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 ableist why didn't well, they do uh snow white and the polycool oh <laughs> <laughs> and she's like i, I think you're that was too racy for them they were well, like wait, racy? Uh, why don't have we have you seen the people yeah. in these polycules they're not Look, racy I'm just, particularly i'm just saying we'll just send a message. Was like that's too far yep. just, just send a message much. to ashley st Clair. she's at the babylon b and mm-hmm. i think that we should do this ashley if you're out there yeah. snow white will be snow played white by the like polycule. it's a morbidly obese woman mm-hmm. and she's got a bunch of guys all around her and she's like i don't need a prince because i've got all this and the guys are like we're happy well, and the they guys are, are mostly trans. They are. <laughs> They're mostly so, trans. And, and would the Wicked Queen be hot as opposed to the Snow White in this okay, version? Wait. Yeah, like, wait, like, wait, 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 the Wicked Queen on, is like her right? sister who's like, wait, wait, your lifestyle's weird. I have a j- legit question about, about how Daily Wire is doing Snow White. Are they going to make, it's Snow White and the Evil Queen, mm-hmm. okay? Is the Evil Queen going to be a communist? And I don't mean like literally, like they make a movie and the Queen walks out and she's got like a sickle, you know, hammer or whatever. But is it going to be an analogy for merit and independence and the evil queen is jealous communism mm-hmm. right i certainly hope that the evil queen is vain and power hungry yeah that <laughs> like she's supposed to be she's supposed she, to be i don't story. understand why we would take here's that what away. they should do they should be like the evil queen retains power by telling all of the suffering people that she's actually helping them and that it's better this way and then snow white is like no no lift yourselves up work hard and defeat the evil queen i hope it's a story about uh individualism and is not involved in the political realm at all yeah i hope it's about vanity and uh struggles Mm -hmm. of aging and youth i don't know that it has to be tied to political ideology and and the value of of love over Mm -hmm. seeking to dominate your opposition there is a part in the original disney snow white that haunts me to this day it's when snow white's baking her pie and then she looks up and it just has the wicked queen in the window and has the old lady and it just it's nightmare fuel. This is, this is crazy. Look at this. Daily Wire says Bent Key will be available at launch with 150 episodes of 18 shows, including four Bent Key originals. New episodes are due to arrive every Saturday morning. So oh, we, Saturday we, morning. Cartoons. Yay. Right. <laughs> so we, we're talking about what we're trying to do, mm-hmm. and it's substantially smaller than what the Daily Wire is doing. But uh, we're launching the coffee shop, Cast Brew, up in, it, it, everyone probably knows where it is now, Martinsburg. And we're going to do the anti uh, Times Square but the main reason we want to do it is not that we think we're going to get super wealthy off having a coffee shop. It's that Saturday mornings are when we invite families to come in for a catered breakfast with their kids. And you know what we'll do? We'll uh, we'll play the Daily Wire's cartoons because we oh, know that's cute. Because they're Aww. new and they're going to be good for families and kids. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. And of course, I'll talk to the Daily Wire first. I just rip their content and play it for everybody. But I'm sure they'll, they'll be cool. You should with probably it. just rip their content and play it for everybody. <laughs> Take it. There's literally no, no reason I mean, not like, to do I'm, that. I'm sure if I asked Jeremy, I was like, hey, we want to play Saturday morning 
your Saturday morning cartoons for families at our coffee shop, he'd be like, please, like tell them to tell their friends. Mm -hmm. I really make like this a thing. that they did this for kids and I really wish them the best with it. I hope that they have a lot of success. Uh, there's, We've been starved for content like that for our children. So I really, yeah. really appreciate it. So thank you guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, look, Brett Cooper is probably really good in this role. She fits the role better than Rachel Ziegler and mm -hmm. she's got an amazing singing voice. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, you've already... She's a political commentator, you know? Unless she's it's like, transitioning yeah. back to acting. It's I hard mean, that to... was her origin, right? Yeah, she comes, she's coming from that to be a political commentator. I so. think for me, more than anything, I am kind of tired of the remakes of, you know, Disney classics and all too. these yeah. things. I'd be really curious to see their original content. They're saying there's all these shows. Or if they were to take some other folk tale that there's has so no many. management. There's so many. Like there's... From there's all like, over the place. Yeah, there was like a, a whole bunch of stories from the... Um, Abenaki and Algonquin tribes in mm -hmm. New England. Yeah. And they were recorded. There was this like, what in the 18 whatevers, you know, this uh, anthropologist went around and recorded all of the stories from the aging Native Americans who were basically on their way out. They were like, you know, old people dying. Mm -hmm. The stories weren't going to, uh, stories weren't going to last forever. And he wrote them all down. And then, uh, you know, published a book of all of these fascinating stories. Like there was this one about this woman who, um, she lives with her parents and she falls in love with this guy and she uh, her parents are like, no, 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 he's a terrible guy. And then she runs away from home to be with this guy and uh, goes to live with him. And eventually her parents go to find her and she's like all alone by this lake because it turns out that she married a sea serpent. <gasps> oh, fascinating. See, this right? is the thing. Fascinating. I, I and there's all these stories about like, start embracing there's these like um, the, there's the story of the Chinu, which is this like ice heart person. Mm hmm. These are all fascinating stories. And of course, this anthropologist was like a white guy from Harvard, I'm pretty sure. And um, it, his book has been widely discredited because he was white He's and the recording color, these stories. Right? God forbid. Right? And they're fascinating stories. Yep. But I would love to see also some of the other grim fairy tales. Yeah. I, you know? I think that there's more content than we give credit to. And the fact that I get why it's like, oh, we had this Rachel Ziegler thing, so now we should make our own Snow White. But I'd actually really like to see Daily Wire just embrace more expansive American culture and the folk tales that come with both European and American culture that we don't already have because it's when they do their own original stuff, that's when I think they're at their strongest. I don't really need to see another version of Snow White. And it would be great to have more American myth and legend yeah. in yeah. our mm -hmm daily you know content and storytelling mm -hmm. yep. i would love that absolutely one of my favorite uh i guess underrated fairy tales is called princess furball oh that's cute yes it's, it's adorable and it's just about this this princess whose family had passed and then she was supposed to be sent away to go marry some some like troll and uh she was like okay but you need to do this favor for me i'm gonna need three dresses one as bright as the sun one as bright as the moon and one as dark as the night sky and she was able to um, and then she wanted a fur coat made of a, the fur of a thousand different animals. And it, she she made all these requests because she's like, they're never going to be able to to do this. And they they did it. And the, the king. The fur coat sounds yes. really mean. Yes, I know. Right. <laughs> Peter yeah. is livid. I would. I would. Yeah. So. But anyway, she, she gets all these animals stuff, right? for one coat. And then she shoves these dresses, which are these big elaborate dresses into these walnut shells and uh, puts them in her pocket. And then they find her. So this other kingdom finds her because she runs away. She doesn't marry the troll. She runs away with her coat and her. Her, her walnut walnuts. suitcases. Her walnut suitcases, right? And they find her. Uh, so this other king finds her hiding in like a, a tree. And they think she's an animal because she's covered in this coat of a thousand furs. And so they're like, oh, and they realize she's a human. They're like, oh, well, you can be a slave in our kitchen. She's like, okay, cool. So she goes, she's a slave in the kitchen. And then she decides she wants to sneak away to the ball, you know, and that's, I don't want to spoil the end of Princess Furball for everybody, but, you know, it, it gets, it gets better than that. So yeah. I would, I would do a Princess Furball. That's that's the thing. There are so many cool stories, both you know, written and you know, folklore that have passed down from different cultures. I'd love to just move away from just recycling the same ones that Disney already yeah, made. They're, I agree. It's it's cooler to see original stuff, even if we're there are actually also remakes not of Disney's mm -hmm. interpretations yep. of the stories instead of retellings of the original fables. Mm -hmm. There are remakes of redheads in Disney. There are just no redheads. They get rid of them. Well, you're not uh, acknowledged oh, as a on. global minority. The Daily Wire's got a redhead on Benke. Maybe That's not an oh. original redhead. <laughs> uh, no, this there's is, no uh, way. It's too uniform. <clears throat> this is their launch, I suppose. 
There you go. I don't that know. I just, fun. I just maybe that up. maybe that's part of the whole message. Like we're not going to delete the redheads. Well, you guys are a genetic global minority. Mm. You, I don't understand why no one advocates for you because you because we're not we're not wimps. We don't we don't care that people you know erase us. We're like whatever. We're you just... should you should be louder about it. I don't think I this know. cause gets enough attention. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I disagree with is the Muppet. Oh. I, I don't know if you can legally call it a Muppet because it's like a protected term or whatever <laughs> but i just never been a fan of like the weird puppet, the puppet things for, yeah, i don't like the kids puppet shows we've got another one sesame here. street this fine guy. i guess whatever that one's a puppet yeah, yeah. the cartoons i think are good i never knew a cookie what about name fraggle was rock Gus. did you not like fraggle rock i did not no you didn't like fraggle that. rock i despise muppets <laughs> you despise i really yeah, like awful. i really muppets. like the muppets i don't Me like too. muppets i do like the muppets no i did like fraggle rock miss piggy is just a is just exists to make fun of liz cheney but I'm, I'm not like I'm, I am not that's insulting not. Liz Cheney. I am saying that Why she was people created. I, but I mean, like that's the value of Miss Piggy mm -hmm. to mock someone like Liz Cheney. <laughs> it, it's so really. Did you like Kermit when he was in those car commercials? That's no. what I. I didn't watch the Muppets growing <laughs> up, but I do remember those car commercials where it was always it was like for a hybrid car, and so they brought out. I watched Kermit the Muppet Show on green. TV. It was on TV. Oh, that's Kermit crazy. being green? Yes, I get it. Yeah. I that's get it. Hybrid. Yep. And I think it was on during the American Idol uh, commercial breaks. I could be wrong. But yeah, that's... the Muppet Show was on TV and it was, I believe it was, I believe it was on Sunday nights. Yeah. And I watched it and the Muppet Show was really cool because it was, uh, it was like a, it was like behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. It was like a live act. It was like their... They were putting on a show yep. do, and there was do, Scooter do, do, was the do, stage do. manager. Yep. And I loved that. That's funny. Do, 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 See, do, I think do. there are there is space for original content. That's that's an example of original content that you can't just be like, uh, so we're going to make our own version of the Muppet show. That's a bit, essentially the same thing. Like pick something new, pick something fresh. Because and then they that's did Muppet Babies. Mm -hmm. And they, they get all the spinoffs. I appreciate that. <laughs> it's just so like, it's just like Star Wars. When, when you load the right. website, this is what it looks like. I like chinchilla because it also it like when, when it loads it then jumps to a thing like sign up now but this is what it shows before showing the sign up now oh is she reading a book about herself is that what she's doing probably i don't know she is is that her name oh. yeah. narcissism <laughs> rampant so wait a minute what values are they promoting maybe here? she's playing the evil queen oh and that's the vanity and the power hungry she's a and... redhead yep. too though mm -hmm. i know unfortunately mm. but Why i guess is... i guess one of my questions too is like yeah. uh, so yes. a lot of the cartoons for kids are they don't really teach lessons it's just kind of kids entertainment so it's silly like fairly odd parents mm -hmm. yeah so it's like not you know it's, it's it's not inappropriate for the kids but mm -hmm. it's also not educational i'm wondering if are they going for more educational learning life lessons you know i think that i i don't think that all entertainment needs that stuff and i don't think that it should be inorganically i do like created. it when there are the undertones like I, um, yeah but jack I mean, basobic wrote that book about the island of ice cream and it, i i have that book but it's it's got all these undertones about why meritocracy is good, why communism is bad, and and it, but it doesn't read that way to a child. But to no, the parent, that's a great. Like, I like his book too. Yes, it's wonderful. But I Billy like, I like to see stories hamster. organically have a morality to them, as opposed mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. have it be the morality is the reason you're making the story. Exactly. Like it's you just want it to like, be this part is of the just narrative natural. intentionally. Yep. Yeah, more blended, mm -hmm. more blended, mm -hmm. and not about like. I have an ideological perspective yes. and now I'm going to make a cartoon. Like, like the proud I was family. To, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was listening to this whole thing about, um, I was doing, so, you know, Israel, war, whatever. I don't know very much about Israel. I don't know very much about any of it. So I started doing like some research research and digging into it. And Hamas had this um, children's show mm -hmm. where oh, yeah. it was about, it was basically teaching children that the best thing they can do in life is be jihadis. Oh my God. Goodness. But that yes. makes sense. Why wouldn't they make that as well? They did make that, and so the first main character died as a jihadi, and they had like can you know they celebrate uh, him probably. more characters after that of children giving their lives to be jihadis. That's crazy. And that was that was on TV in Gaza. Wow. I mean, it's it's not like so in your know, Christian faith. There's there's martyrs. You sure. Know, but but we don't we don't preach that. Like it is good to be a martyr. Here's a right. show about martyrs and you're going to be a martyr and these children are martyring it's, so it's it's just weird the way that it's presented in this way well it was a shift too like from the research i've done anyway you know it was a shift in the uh it became like a far it was a extremist islamic 
um, group, mm -hmm. right? So it wasn't like you're you're just everyday Muslims. It became this extremist idea mm -hmm. that infiltrated incrementally. And then eventually what they started to do was like when Hamas was founded in like 88 and they started attacks in 89 and it kept going, but then they started providing and then they won the election, you know, against like what Fatah, I think it was. But they um, they started providing all these social services because I was like, why did the people of Gaza Except elect mm -hmm. Hamas to lead them in 2006 after Israel, Israel withdrew? Why did they do that? And so I was trying to figure that out, too. And it was because Hamas was providing all of these social services. Right. They were providing yep. schools and mm -hmm. hospitals and all of these things. And so they offered this big promise. Mm -hmm. But the promise comes with this horrific price. I have a friend who lived under the Taliban. And uh, this is this is uh, probably six, seven, eight years ago now. But he would write me and he'd tell me all the good things that the Taliban did for them. And right. A lot of social services. Mao did things too. Yeah. Other yeah, well, than that's how you win supporters, right? right? You offer them what they need. Right. And I mean, if you know, the lessons of Che Guevara tell us anything, it's mm -hmm. that like if you're going to do this kind of revolution and take control, you need the support of the people to do it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And so, if the people think they depend on you, which right. so and then you kind of look at the government. social programs in America and it kind of answers all the questions. And then you start to wonder too, like what are you know, what we've given up in return for those social programs is mm -hmm. pretty extreme. Yeah. Thankfully, not as extreme, I think. The as more, what's going, but as ours Hamas. were faced in over time, so people became the used more. It's to incremental. Them. Mm -hmm. Me and um, me and Jack Sobek were talking about this: the incrementalism of evil. Yep, yeah. and like yeah, how it's a slow it. Creep. It's and a slow and they, creep. they let you become yeah. comfortable. The more yeah. migrants that we have here, the more social programs we're going to yes. need, and the more right. reliant people exactly. come. So it's it's definitely a trickle. It's slow, and we had a yeah, we had a writer at, at Human Events who did a deep dive and comparing all of the different things um, of what jihad is mm -hmm. and like comparing it to the Quran and like <clears throat> digging into different translations. And she's kind of this crazy genius actually. Um, but uh, the first the first stage of jihad is when you're Islamic and you're a minority in the culture mm -hmm. and you just normalize your existence. You like say that you're just really nice and all of this stuff. Right. And then it's just the incremental approach. Um, it's really terrifying to look at some of these ideologies of like total hatred mm -hmm. of yeah, the other definitely. and how it morphs and takes over. Yeah, some of the hadith are just literally written about that almost exactly. Just yeah. about being against somebody else and about like how you're to struggle against this person. Because that's what I mean. The word means struggle. So that's mm -hmm. a better way to look at it. But you're, you're right, all that stuff. Yeah. It's really crazy. Let's go to Super Chats. All right, everybody, if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. Head over to timcast.com and click join us become a member and then you'll get access to our discord server which is for those that aren't familiar it's like a program where you can hang out in chat rooms and talk with like-minded individuals but it is your tool to submit questions to us so during our members only uncensored show which will be up at about 10 p.m tonight you can submit questions and even call in and talk to all of us it's uh super cool and super fun we hope you do it but more importantly as a member at timcast.com you're just supporting the work we do ensuring that the projects we're engaged in succeed you can also buy Cast Brew Coffee, but uh, being a member at TimCast.com is the most direct way to allow us to continue doing the work we do. All right. I'm Not Your Buddy Guy is back. He is once again the first Super Chat saying, if you wanted to destroy the U.S. yet maintain some plausible deniability, would you do anything different from what Biden has done? Agreed. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's just abject failure. Yeah, it's demoralization, destabilization, crisis, and normalization. Yep. Clint Torres says, howdy, people. Tim, forgive my misspeak about your upcoming discussion about religion, but my misstatement still stands. I'm by no means a Catholic, but as I trust you for your honest news, I trust Father Mike Schmitz on theology. Yeah, the plan is to get fresh from Fresh and Fit, Ian and Seamus Coughlin, and we're going to do a Culture War episode discussing religion and spirituality. That'd be cool. Oh, interesting. Which will be wild. I think Seamus I feel is like a really interesting thinker. Seamus yeah, is going to be like pulling his hair the whole time, being like, guys, guys, guys. But I think a lot of people ask shame. I mean, I, I know personally, I ask him tons of questions about, you know, how he got to where he is. He's probably prepared to uh, to argue the point. Um, but I'd be curious to hear the other perspective and what questions they would raise. I would I could talk about that all day, like religion and faith. And mm -hmm. I'm going to have Ian on my show on <clears throat> Sunday, I think, to talk about spirituality. Oh, on spaces. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yes. Stephen says, says, pray for my brothers and sisters in the MEU that is deployed. May God keep them safe. Here, here. God bless. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. man. Absolutely. 
All right. What do we have? Let's grab some more super chats. What is this? Someone uh, mentioning jet fuel and steel beams. Uh, one person, nonpartisan kitty says, bringeth thy bocus on today's show. <laughs> well, I mean, we would, but Ian's not here. And usually he's the one who'll run down and go grab him. But uh, bocus, it's tough. I saw him the other day and he was just sitting by his water. We have the little flower automatically mm -hmm. that sprays the water out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went up in the morning and he was just sitting there looking kind of lethargic. And when it came down, he's in the exact same spot, which is not a good sign. Yeah. yeah. However, later that night, he followed me downstairs as I was leaving into the green room. And then apparently after I left, he started zipping around running. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. oh, that's yeah. great. Or whenever you, like, if I go to fill a water bottle, he'll come running out of no, like, I don't even know where he is. He'll suddenly appear because he really likes the faucet water. Yes. So yeah. <laughs> sometimes I think he's not doing too well. And other times I think he's just not correctly motivated. Yeah. Right. Well, the zoomies are good. He's he's been alive like a year longer than he was supposed to. Like a year ago, he was stumbling, falling over, and and just crapping really where he was where he stood. Yeah, and we thought that was it. Yeah, and then we put him on like a drug cocktail, which is like he's got a heart defect. He's got bad kidneys. Mm -hmm. So I miss having cats. Yeah, let me know. Yeah. Like like send me some pictures. I can paint him for you. I'd like to do that. Oh yeah. All mm -hmm. right. All right. What do we have? Uh, let's see. Alex Hilbert says, I saw y'all were eating MREs last week. You better get used to picking the right ones, private pool. If World War III goes down, based on the numbers in my unit, there will be a large draft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like private pool. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to, I'm, I'm, you know, what, what, what am I looking at? Five more months until I'm 38. So if this war breaks out, oh, 38 year olds, you're, you're, you're getting picked up. No question. I mean, we're not first in line. <laughs> You know, if they get Definitely desperate with this draft, in I mean, Ukraine's doing <laughs> women 18 to 60, so. Yeah. You know, right, yeah. right, right. But to be fair, I am rich and rich people don't get drafted. <laughs> so fair. all I got to do is make the right contribution to a senator and I'm good. <laughs> <You're> safe. <laughs> but in, in all seriousness, that's basically how it's always operated. If you were rich, you got out of the draft. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, well what they, connected. That's why so many presidents wouldn't. Well, what they drafted. would do back in the day, what they would do is if like a wealthy family had their son drafted, they would pay for someone to take his place. Yes. Wow. Yeah, Literally. crazy. Yep. It's cool. You can actually see what draft numbers were pulled during the draft, the last one, and I would have been drafted <coughs> for a guy. Really? My, my birthday was pulled, yep. Oh, my death wow. number they, was. Is called that how they up. did it? They did it by birthdays? They did it by birthday. They did it by birthday. birthday. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, my dad's number was called up, but he didn't have to go. Why? Because he's deathly afraid of bees. Really? Oh, what a and fascinating yeah, so, way to get out of this. Well, so what was interesting is his number came up, and he was like, okay, I guess I'm doing this. And my mom was like, nope. <laughs> and she like went around and got like a doctor's letter and all this stuff and he didn't end up going. That's wow. great. Yeah. I think eventually he told me once and I don't know if he still feels this way because now he's like in his 70s and he's recovering from cancer and he's like very mellowed out and sort of fast. He's like he's really brilliant. My dad, mm -hmm. he's like really he's in smart. a reflective phase of life, reflective phase of life. And he's got like a ton of kids and we're all weird, Aww. but whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he told me once that he had some regrets about not having gone mm -hmm. when his, you know, peers had gone. Yeah, yeah. of course. All right. What do we have here? I'm grateful. We got I would not be alive. RWBY Nora saying Appalachian Nights is the best cup of coffee I've ever had. Please think about a app. Night, uh, an app, night dark chocolate mocha blend. Ooh. Thank you all. Much love. A mocha blend would be well, good. Well, the one. coffee originally is like, we're opening a coffee shop. So we wanted to get the coffee. That was the fastest and easiest thing to do. The coffee has been wildly successful. So uh, in I terms- I meaning to buy some. Mm. It, 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 honestly, it is my favorite you coffee. You haven't already? I thought you liked us, Libby. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm a member. You're fired. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the coffee shop is just taking forever because of uh, construction and permitting reasons, which sucks. And now winter's coming. So we'll see. You know, it's like the coffee shop was supposed to be open like six months ago, then seven months or five months ago, then four and three. Yep. And it was supposed to be open in two weeks. And now it's going to be another year. Who knows? Mm. But we are planning on a bunch of other stuff. So but we do have the coffee, which is cool. Right. Yeah. And that's why I was like, solid. We're, 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 you know, it's, it's a multi, multi, uh, multi pronged approach. We, we're, we produce the coffee. We're selling that. We have the website. Now we're waiting for the building to get set up. Once the building is set up, we're also working on the franchise corporation documents and, and pa proper pa uh, paperwork so that we can start popping these things up all over the place and having people sign up to to run them. I was excited that we had the K-Cups ready when we were uh, stuffing gift bags in Miami. Mm -hmm. The yeah. K-Cups were there. And oh, I that was seen them cool. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. Neglectful Sausage says, just remember DS9 season five, episode 11, The Darkness and Light. Kira said, you were all valid targets. You didn't belong here. About trying to unalive a butler, Cardi, and to DS9's writers, she was the good guy. Yeah, wow. that's true. 
She was always the good guy, <clears throat> even though she was a, she had been basically a terrorist. Yeah. Hmm. That's right. That show is good. That, that show, good show is so good. Yeah. It's my favorite Star Trek these days. I think I have watched DS9 all the way through. Like, like Joseph Metzler times. says Trump was reported to have told Putin and she at the G20 that if they invaded anyone, he would nuke them. As in them personally, not their countries. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's just no one like him. Where is he when we need him most? Oh, wait, we didn't elect him. You know, he's trying to kill them to their he's faces. In, he's, oh, in but he's, Iowa. he's in Iowa saying that he my personality. Words. Right? I loved his thing about like, my personality is why we didn't have wars. What is that quote? I'm going to find the quote. It's, true, I, it's not wrong, though. I had, it's correct. I have what's great about it. And he is also some. My personality headed. kept yeah. us out of war. That's what mm -hmm. he said. Right. I, I one that. of my one of my I don't talk about my sisters that much. But one of my sisters is a redhead, and when she was two. She had appendicitis, but it went under a diagnosed for like a week, and she was oh, in extreme. You told me about this. It was crazy. crazy. I've told you a story before. Wow. And when they finally brought her to the right hospital after like three or four trips, and the doctor was finally like, "Oh yeah, this is appendicitis. Yeah. That's exactly what's going on. It looked like shrapnel floating around her abdomen." Oh god. The, she went to surgery, Jeez. and the surgeon came out and was like, "She is alive because of the force of her personality." And I think this is real with some people. And he attributed yeah. it to the red hair. You said she was like really obstinate. She was the most fero She was always a ferocious toddler, but she was like, even when she was in excruciating pain, could not be moved. It was awful. No one could figure out what's going on. It was just like. She, she, it was her way and nothing else through the whole thing and I swear that's what kept her alive and I think that's why Donald Trump saying the force of my personality <clears throat> kept out of war is actually an extremely valid point some people are just meant to be in certain situations their personalities can handle it Thomas All right. Jefferson Raymond was a redhead G, Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says question for y'all how do you guys think a draft would go will families move out of the country join up or tell the government to go suck an egg depends on the circumstances uh -huh. by which we enter the war if right now Joe Biden just says, we have war, have a nice day. Yeah, then yeah, draft would never fly. If something happens to the president, then sure, many of the MAGA types are going to be like, no way, I'm not getting involved. But a lot of more liberal and moderate and NPC like families would have no problem whatsoever in that instance. In fact, you'll probably get a lot of conservatives too. who are going to have the attitude of like, I may not like Joe Biden. He may have been a bad guy, but you've, you've, you know, this is our family, right? It's kind of like when you got like a brother and sister who fight all the time and hate each other, but then outside someone calls the girl ugly and the guy's like, don't talk about my sister. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because like, you know, I'm allowed to argue with my family, not you. Yeah. Or insult my family. Anyone with a lot of siblings, I think, can really relate to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's grab some more super chats. Blanket Senpai says, hey, Tim, please try Cyberpunk 2077 as it deals with topics related to the show. Warring ideological factions, corporation wars, technology, and AI. I tried playing it. I couldn't do it. I don't know. Did you play it? Uh, no, my little brother did, I think, but not really for me. I'm not much of a gamer in case anyone mm. hasn't noticed. <laughs> Pino Shea's helicopter tour says Marines age cap on entrance is 28. Oh, yeah. All other branches of military is 35. However, you can get a waiver in World War II. Up to 64 year olds were drafted for war. That's true. Yeah. Yikes. I think I, I like the idea that if you vote, you we hold the vote. Shall we go to war? If you vote yes, we draft you. Yeah. <laughs> you personally are going, Lindsey yeah. Graham. <laughs> oh, yeah. Lindsey Graham's on the front line. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand. I mean, he's in office until 2027, and yet he's like, get ready for all the kids I'm going to send to war. Mm -hmm. It's too much. All right. Where are we at? Sensei Tank 94 says, Tim, YouTube is aggressively hiding the live show today. I love the slow rumble transition for the long game. Keep it up, brother. Independent media will save us all. Keep at it. Friday, sure. I had a really, really hard time finding the link to the show because I wasn't on. So I was trying to find it. I had to go. I looked it up on your channel. I like, checked everything. No, no. Friday uh, when Dinesh was on. Oh, right. And I ended up only being able to find the link because Ian had tweeted it out. I could not find it on YouTube. Even the preview thing wasn't showing up. That's right. crazy. Yep. What do you people, mean? The preview thing is not showing up? People will go to, they'll go to the YouTube channel itself and it's not there. Yeah. That's what happened that's to me on wacky. Friday. Yep. And I was thinking with like everything we thought might happen or because of culture war, like, I don't know. Right. Yep. Right. But that's why. Go to live page and it's literally just not going to be there. Won't mm -hmm. show up at all. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It was crazy. Yep. Rumble mm -hmm. and X are the future. YouTube is dying. Mm. And also sort of offing itself, it seems. Like, yeah. why would you hide like. such a high profile live show? Right. Mm -hmm. yep. Well, it's Doesn't... because we have the wrong political opinions. Yeah, it's probably uh, ESG, DEI related. Yeah. I, I wonder, though. I really do. Look, there's a lot of we were skating today in the garage and uh, I'm like for the first time in a year, whatever, turned the TV on because we have a TV mm -hmm. in the park and I was playing YouTube music videos 
we got a bunch of commercials, pro pro Israel commercials, very graphic commercials, wow. crazy. I can't believe they were playing some of these these commercials. But you know, I wonder if you made a YouTube show that was like explicitly pro Israel, pro uh, pro intervention, would it be prominently displayed on the front page for everybody? I kind of think it would. I think you'd get hundreds of thousands of like like if we came out right away on this show and started saying things like we must intervene. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to bet YouTube would promote us front page i get a phone call from susan she'd be like your show's doing so well like <laughs> you know we're, we're doing a new pilot program for marketing we'd love to promote you that's mm -hmm. interesting i wonder if that would happen well, probably they, they tolerate us because we're like moderate hey civilians shouldn't die we're not for intervention but mm -hmm. hamas are terrorists and what they did was evil and wrong and mm -hmm. so they're like okay well it's not all bad you know mm -hmm. if we came out like I, I i'd be curious to see what would happen to the likes of you know hassan or many of these other leftists yeah. who are like cheering on terrorists. <laughs> you know. Interesting to see. But apparently, I've been hearing that um, it's an interesting dynamic because uh, uh, Hassan does that podcast with Ethan Klein. Oh, yeah. And Ethan Klein's Jewish. Yes. And I'm pretty sure his wife is from Israel. Yeah. Was like, um, she was in the IDF, I think, yes, right? Yeah, she was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it must be like really weird now. To like, have they released dude, any episodes awkward. since? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, no, they, 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 no, they, they, I need a body. I need a body language expert to start reacting to their show. And be like, <laughs> like obvious what you, tension in the room. It's it's just a really weird thing to see that these people, uh, men on the left, have have no moral positions other than they hate the United States and they hate the right. Mm -hmm. So that's why they say like queers for Palestine or whatever. It's completely contradictory. It it's, makes it's, no it's sense. It's completely illegal in Gaza. It's a ten year prison sentence. That's that's the that's the actual hard uh, law. Ten years in prison. But they say these things and it's just like eventually the dam breaks and a question of ideology emerges where they realize they were never aligned with each other. They actually just agreed on who they hated. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. That's not. Well, that thing. was interesting, too. That was like um, part of my research is uh, so Israel expelled a bunch of this was I forget when maybe it was in the 80s. Israel expelled a bunch of um, Hamas guys. Maybe it was after. I don't know. They expelled a bunch of Hamas guys to Lebanon and then Hezbollah and Hamas teamed up, even though one is Sunni and one is Shia. They were like, that's OK. We all hate the Jews. Yeah, right. That's what <laughs> so, I've been saying. I've been worried about is if that if that really and it is clearly happening right, now yeah. uh, as it happens more. And, and then more, Iran like helped train yes, them. Yeah. Exactly. And BRICS um, yeah. were negotiating a truce between the, the Shiites and the Sunni. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like any of them. No. <laughs> No, and all, then they'll just all come for us. Highly sus. Yeah. This is an interesting. Uh, Colt Zipriani, someone's going to have to break this down for me. He says, thoughts on the Army's Lake City ammunition plant operated by Winchester is seizing sales to civilians. Civvy sales account for 30%, but the Fed needs the ammo. Fortune tellers follow the money. Are you saying that the Army is basically go, like buying out all the ammo with like a first right to purchase so it looks like. over civilians? From what they're saying, that's what it looks like, yeah. Remember when everyone was concerned about the IRS buying a bunch of bullets? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are they buying hollow points? <laughs> <laughs> it's starting to get weird. Yeah. Well, and, it's because they have special agents who are armed. Yeah, true. But this is all like right in time for Halloween. Isn't it just the spookiest, weird, scary well, world? Well, it's October. Yeah. October yeah, is. is always messed up. Do you remember in 2016 where there were all the killer clowns? And yes, yeah. I do remember that. What and a then, time. Right, that was weird. In a way. And we just all pretend that that never happened. What if they didn't go away? They're just looking around and we got distracted. Uh, yeah, that's true. They they got bored. They're like, all right, they're not paying attention anymore. I don't like Country clowns. Tunic says, if a draft is issued, neither me nor my friends or family are going to serve an illegitimate government and go die for the elites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'll go to jail. The thing is, I think we all agree on this, but the draft... I think they ultimately want to draft, but they know they can't do it until they have some sort of rallying moment for uh, patriotic and nationalist support. And... I just don't think Joe Biden's the guy to yeah. make that happen. That's a, Maybe that's why they're sending him to Israel. Something happens to Joe Biden and then Trump gets elected and exactly. then it's Donald right. Trump calling for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because I think people would serve if Trump asked them to. Yes, yes. but I don't think that if Biden died, people are going to go sign up to, no. be, right. to go avenge Biden's death. Yeah. Which is so, yeah, a problem for the deep state right now. Right. That Trump is the right. only one who could get a draft to work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree with you guys. Man. Hybrid says Biden going to Israel is a complete setup. Everyone can see this as a telegraphed Pearl Harbor Lusitania moment. And with that, we should hold all who is allowed accountable in the end. What we the people do. I, I got to be honest. I really I think ninety nine point nine percent Biden goes to Israel. It's boring. And he comes back and then starts preaching about why we need to, why we need to defend them. I'm just saying that there's a concern that it's like probably a really bad idea to send the president to an active conflict zone like this. 
doesn't it, seem it smart. doesn't follow a certain pattern it should follow. It follows a pattern it shouldn't follow, which is why it's alarming to us. Yeah, mm -hmm. true. Our borders too. On David to Toronto Biden. says, if we let a country kill our president, then we have no country. Yes, right. that's my point even if too. it's a bad one, even if it's a bad president. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's, that's exactly my I agree with you there, fella. Totally agree. Oh Man. God. All right. Where are we at? Brand Dizzle says, can you think of a better way to get Newsom to be the Dem candidate than sending Biden to an active war zone? <laughs> no, not really. It doesn't make sense that they are sending him unless they want something to happen to him. Yeah. Well, what, what if they, like, what do they think? Like, what is the upside? I'm sorry. Is the thing. I can't figure out the upside. There is the, the approval him. rating of Biden is in the trash. Right, like, but it's not going to get. Well, if We're something, God forbid, happened to him or if he went over there and showed a show of strength for America, that could up his numbers. What is a Joe Biden thing. show of strength? Not falling down the stairs while no. he's there? Just saying <laughs> like something the very is so low. Saying something scripted and direct. He can't, he can't even do that. Like a state of the union, the way he does that. That would be my only way for people to, or just his, the, the, just what him if? going there. Do you think they jack him up on drugs so he could do that? Oh, absolutely. Of course. Oh, yeah. He had IV marks right? on his hand. Uh -huh. what, if, what if it's not that they target Biden, but like, a preschool and then Biden runs into the burning <laughs> building and like comes out carrying kids and he's like, come on, man, I did the best I could. And then he just like collapses from smoke inhalation and they're like, he can't run there. Those That's kids. the only problem. Yeah. Well, Maybe I if mean, they gave him a bike that had the training wheels I on kind it. Of They'll feel bring like, his body double and that right, one will go body double. Enough, enough pharmaceuticals and you could, you could do anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. I don't know. I just, like I said, we were all upset about Ukraine. We spent billions of dollars on it. He didn't go for a year. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not even that far. Well, into you know this. what's interesting? Like we spent one hundred and thirteen billion dollars on Ukraine since February twenty twenty two, and I think we give Israel per a deal from twenty sixteen. It was like thirty eight billion over ten years, and it's like Israel's done a lot better with that money <laughs> than Ukraine has done with theirs. Well, mm -hmm. we're just obviously laundering money through Ukraine. Oh yeah, yeah. it's very read, bad. Let's read some more. We got the dude abides. He says, "Hey Tim, hear me out." When you guys do the anti Times Square, you should have a New Year's ball drop in the center as well. Ooh, but instead fun. of a giant glowing ball, it should be a giant glowing rooster. Let the <laughs> cock jokes begin. It's actually a really good idea. <laughs> be fine. I, like I, it. No, I, I thought it'd be really cool. If it's like you don't have a ball drop or a rooster drop. You have a rooster that crows right at the strike That'd of midnight. Be That'd be fun. And it's like this. It's like waking up to a new dawn. You know yeah, I mean? that's cool. Rooster oh, that's beautiful. Wakes you up. Yeah. And I, I think everybody out here, because everyone, everyone out here, literally everyone owns chickens. Mm -hmm. They would all love it. Yeah. yeah. Be people people don't realize when you live out in West Virginia, like you go hang out. We don't watch the game. We talk chickens. Mm -hmm. Like you go to your buddy's house and you're like, oh, chickens. Oh, well, yeah. Rooster's like, oh, I got a rooster too. And that's, I'll <laughs> you're a really close friend. You start talking about, are you going to get goats? Because I'm thinking about getting goats. <laughs> I really wanted a sheep. It's actually like half true. <laughs> no, I'm <Yeah>. not kidding. <laughs> we were talking, We, me and Hannah Claire were actually talking about this the other day. Mm -hmm. You got to get a goat. Because I was saying that I wanted to make my own cheese. Yeah, and what how, the best idea is to have some sort of have goat or sort of, you probably don't have enough land for a cow. But, but like a sheep, You can maybe? get a mini cow. Oh, sheep, you, you could, could get, get a There's cow. mini cows? Yeah, they produce like a gallon of milk per day instead of 12. That's all so you need. That's, that's manageable really, for your yeah, household. that is manageable. I would I would be making so many cakes if I had that. The uh, <laughs> I'm always just working from Libby's house you and need she a couple makes chickens. me pizzas. <laughs> I would make you pizzas and cakes and cookies. <laughs> Guys, the other night Libby's my son the best housewife of all time. He was like, Mom, do we have any dessert? And I was like, no, but I could make some cookies. And he was like, okay. <laughs> and we made cookies. You leave New York and suddenly you're like the best 1950s. No, household. well, no, I was doing that stuff anyway. Oh, sure. But I it's was. better now with your own cow, your own eggs. <laughs> Soon I'm getting a new couch, actually. I'm very excited. The, the kids, Charlie, uh, my son and his friend, they broke my couch. Oh. Uh, they were jumping around. Mm, it was already sort of broken and held together with wood glue. So this it, was, it was a long time coming. Yeah. Um, Joshua 029, Article One, Section Eight, C Eleven, shall make him out of let uh, shall make shall make him out letters of mark under the great seal, and by virtue of these he may attack and seize the property of the aggressor nation without hazard of being condemned as a robber or pirate. Mm. So Honorary privateer, pirates. yeah, privateers, yeah, privateer. corsairs, yeah. pirates, Corsair, way Corsair. more fun to say, but yes. Are we yeah. gonna have kids in elementary school that are like, when I grow up, I want to be a pirate? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty cool. If yeah. that's if they, that's something they could do, actually live their dreams. I feel like it's more realistic than becoming an astronaut. I mean, for some as kids. long as yeah. they, as long as they don't say, "Mom, I want to have a peg leg and no eye," <laughs> and then the mom's like, "You know what? This is how you identify." So yeah, we're gonna take you to the doctors and take your eye and your leg because right. you're a pirate. That's I mean, who you I are. Mean, 
tattoos uh, have increased over the last decade. Right, Remember true. People tattoos. So maybe we are just ready for pirate culture to come back. Hey, I mean, there's a bunch Bring of it. young men my age are looking for work. So mm-hmm. yeah, it sounds like it's a good idea. It's a pirate's Adam, life for him. Duke Carm says, Tim, Brett Cooper was a legitimate actress who's been on TV and in movies long before joining the Daily Wire. It's true. Okay. I am I am, I am, am aware. I know. I just feel like for the Daily Wire to have her oh, you know, right. multi, yeah. the same mu- multi-class. I think when you make a choice to change your career, you know, sometimes you have to stick with it. Like, Well, no, I mean, it, like, it, it's just like the Daily Wire doing it just feels like, I don't know, man. It just feels like you're doing too much. Yeah. Well, and like if she's trying to build her brand as a political commentator, it's not that she couldn't do it. She no. couldn't do both things, but it sometimes makes sense to stay in one lane if that's the thing that you're building up. I mean, I don't know. I she just, wants to be an actress. Like, this is, this is why I'm do. never in the Cast Castle stuff for the most part. I just, it, I, I don't know. Like the music stuff is fine because it's always kind of like a, a side thing, but mm-hmm. starring in movies, like yeah. cameos I think are fine. You know, look, I'll just keep it vague. There have been people who have approached us and be like, would you like to be in a film? Or I'm, No, <laughs> never going to happen. TV show, movie, uh-uh. Nope, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I think as long as there's no like overt political messaging in this, then it'll be good. But if they try to put too much into it, it's just going to be like, oh, the cringe factor is just way too high. It just, it's just like right there. But I don't know. Hopefully they hopefully they will. All right, let's just grab, we'll grab a couple more here. Thinker for Life says all Super Chats over $50 should get free coffee. It would just be impossible to actually implement that system. Like if you send in a Super Chat of that big, like difficult. we can't track your address and things like that. And, yeah. and they got sales tax and oh, heavens, heavens. <laughs> but we are working on uh, protein powder stuff, which is going to be fun. Nice. And uh, Alex Stein's coffee is almost done. We've got the bags, uh, uh, the designs ready. What's it called? Alex Stein's Primetime Grind, two times caffeine. <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> I'm excited yeah. about it. I like that. He's super excited. We're super excited. Oh, I'm you excited. Know. That's going to be good. And then we're, we're we're interested in doing an Ian coffee as well. Oh, cool. What nice. would Ian's coffee be? I don't know. We got to talk to Ian about it. It would be like caffeine free, like mellow brew. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe it's like, organic. yeah, maybe it would be like, so I think we have like organic. a light and single a dark. Single source. It would be like single source. <laughs> yeah. We got, we're, we're doing focus with Mr. Bocus, nice. which will be our espresso. Nice. espresso. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. I like that. Focus with Mr. Bocus. And uh, let's just grab uh, uh, one more, uh, one more super chat. What do we have here? I would just want right. to do like a nice Darjeeling tea. Hunter Ooh. Killer says Daily Wire should make a movie about Robert Smalls, the former slave who commandeered a Confederate ship and used it to free slaves. That, oh, that... would cause the left to self-destruct into nonsense. I agree. <laughs> that That's is interesting. That is great. Story, yeah. All right, everybody. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button? Subscribe to this channel and share the show with your friends if you like it. Head over to TimCast.com, click join us because the members only uncensored show is going live in a couple of minutes and you don't want to miss it because we'll be taking your calls and actually have members call in and talk to us. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Josie, do you want to shout anything out? Yeah, you can follow me on X at T-R-H-L official and uh, go over to TimCast and subscribe there to become a member and help support our work. Yeah. Uh, I'm Hannah Claire Brimlaw. I'm a writer for TimCast.com. You guys know that I think you should all follow at TimCast News on X and on Instagram. It's the best. You can see work from me, from Chris Bertman, from Adrian Norman. We have a cool staff. I like them a lot. If you want to follow me personally, I'm on Instagram at HannahClaire.B and I'm on Twitter at HC Brimlow. Thank you so much. And I'm so glad Libby could be here tonight. Hey, thanks, Hannah Claire. Uh, I'm Libby Emmons. You can find me on Twitter uh, or whatever you guys call X. it now. Whatever. <laughs> We don't have uh, a name here. On the internet. I don't care. <laughs> um, at Libby Emmons. You can find me there. I'm on Instagram uh, uh, at Libby.Emmons. And of course, what you should really do is come check out the postmillennial.com and see all of the great stories that we're running every day and humanevents.com where we're doing some really new, interesting work. And if you'd like to subscribe, which would be great, it's the postmillennial.com slash subscribe. And to all my South African friends, Boka Boka, let's win against the English once more and take back the Web Ellis. It's ours. Uh, Make sure you watch the game. Anyways, cheers. We'll see you all over at TimCast.com in a couple minutes. Thanks for hanging out.